What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Broly, the Scion of Legend, Part 3. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Paragus flew towards Broly like a comet. In no time, he arrived a few meters away before stopping. My son, why are you attacking me? I am your father. We are family. We shouldn't fight against each other. Broly looked at him with disdain before tilting his head to the side. An arm clawed at the air where his head has been just a moment ago. Broly elbowed the CE who had approached him. It instantly exploded on impact. Without waiting any longer, he rushed towards his father and punched out. Paragus tried to block the attack with a punch of his own, but his arm just broke on impact. Paragus tried to back away, but Broly didn't let him have any rest. With every punch, a cracking sound accompanied by it, he was completely at Broly's mercy. Unexpectedly, unlike other CEs, his body was composed of bones and flesh with the only exception that black liquid was running through his body. Wait, Broly. I can explain this. I didn't mean you any harm. I just dash. Why are you attacking us for? Broly interrupted him. Attack? I don't know what you dash. Don't play any games. You are obviously controlling at least a major part of the seas. See? I really don't know what you were talking about. Paragus shouted back. Then what are you doing here? I don't know, I just am. I really don't know anything. As they were talking, a few Class A's were silently approaching, but Broly was not inexperienced with this partial blindness anymore. He could feel the changes they made to the surroundings. Paragus was evidently controlling them to surround him. Hmm. Is he stalling for time? Are they using Paragus as bait to lure me out, but what for? Whatever it is, they are just using his body to make me hesitate. I have to end him quickly and figure out what is going on. I don't have time for your bullshit. Die. Green Key was enveloping Broly until he opened his palm and the key started to gather in his hand. Broly closed his hand and green light shone out between his fingers. Omega Blaster. Broly waved his hand and a tiny sphere flew directly towards Paragus who unexpectedly used a range attack with his life force to meet his attack. On contact, Broly's attack suddenly rapidly expanded, growing quickly to a few hundred meters in diameter. Surprisingly, the key sphere was being slowed down. Without saying anything, Broly still with his outstretched arm, again started to gather key in his hand before shooting it at his previous attack. It merged with his previous attack, and his Omega Blaster again increased in size, pushing the attack of Paragus back. No, you can't kill me. I am your father, Broly. Before he could say anything else, the attack completely engulfed him and exploded. The devastating explosion erased everything in his path to nothingness, no matter if it was animal, trees, or CE. In tens of kilometers, everything died. Only Broly was left. Broly waved his hand, creating a huge torrent blasting away the dust cloud, revealing the only thing left from the surroundings, a massive crater. At the borders, a river started flowing into this seemingly bottomless crater, which was the only sign of any movement with the debris which fell from the sky. He had a faint feeling coming from his back. He instantly knew that something appeared behind him with incredible speed. Without hesitation, Broly powered up, creating an expanding green sphere, pushing everything outside away. But this was not strong enough to prevent the figure from attacking, as it just broke through his key shield. An arm which was enveloped by black life force, creating a black blade extension, headed straight for Broly's back. In no time, the blade reached his destination. But instead of piercing through his back, it broke off, shattering into a million pieces. Broly slowly turned around and looked at the figure who had attacked him. With complete white eyes, a 250 centimeters tall frame, his hair in a green color and a devilish grin. 
Now in his legendary form, he looked at the figure before speaking. Oh, mother, you have come as well, what a pleasant surprise. Cherry Broly's mother. Her face was staring at him with widened eyes. How are you this strong? This wasn't supposed to happen. She shouted out in shock. Ha ha ha. And what was supposed to happen? He grabbed towards her head, but she quickly evaded his hand and distanced herself in a flash, still looking at Broly's direction. Suddenly, his figure vanished, and she slammed with her back into something. Where do you think you are going? Ha ha ha. His arms surrounded her, as he gave her a hug from behind. You know, you just missed father. It wouldn't be a happy reunion if you guys didn't meet. He started squeezing his arms. Her body started to bend under the force. Wait, Broly. I am your mother. I didn't want to harm you. I just wanted to test my son's ug strength. I dash, sure. Furthermore, I know what you want now. You want to see you husband. Understandable. Don't worry. I will send you to him. Crack. Cherry's bones started breaking one by one. The black liquid in her eyes slowly receded. As the black liquid started oozing out of her stomach, which was squished by Broly's arms. She was panting heavily. She was only moments before dying. Broly turned her around and hold her by her neck. Her eyes seemed to gain clarity as she looked at Broly. She raised her arm, resting her hand against Broly's cheek. Broly! Son! Sorry I, I wasn't there for you. Her hand lost its strength, falling to her side. Broly let go of her lifeless body, letting it fall to the ground. He wiped away the liquid on his cheek and saw a red stain on his backhand. His white eyes widened, and his pupils started to vaguely show themselves, as he only now realized what just happened. The sea didn't take her and Paragus over completely, they just partially controlled them and made them attack him. He didn't kill puppets, he killed his parents. Although he didn't know his parents well, he was enraged. Enraged by the fact that they made him kill his own relatives and that they let go of their control to show the possibility that he could have saved her. This wasn't just a physical, but a mental attack, an insult. Arg! He screamed out as he held his head, not noticing that the black liquid was being absorbed by him. A few minutes passed with him screaming. He slowly lowered his arms before standing upright again. You rag! Green key spheres emerged from all over his body, flying all over the place, killing thousands of seas who have approached him from afar. The seas started retreating into the same direction. Broly noticed this and immediately followed them. You think you screw with me? I will wipe you off the face of this planet. On his face was no smile anymore. Instead veins started bulging on his face, as his face was filled with rage. His eyes were back to complete white as he killed his way through the masses. Without hesitation, he directly flew into a massive cave entrance, seemingly the nest of these seas. He killed every sea that appeared in front of him. He was filled with endless rage and the only thought to kill every single last of them. With an unstoppable momentum, he bulldozed through everything inside the cave, going deeper inside. The seas were facing his wrath, as he didn't miss a single one of them, as he went down. An hour-long tremors were felt even thousands of kilometers away. As he went further inside the cave, it started descending deeper underground. After an hour, he was already hundreds of kilometers into the ground. The seas he encountered became less in number but also increasingly stronger. Every sea he encountered already was comparable to high-level Class A's and more of them even exceeded that level by a margin. Strangely, every sea had faces of a scion. There were no other races to be seen. Although they had had greatly grown in strength, for Broly they were still all the same, as he obliterated everyone in his path into nothingness. Even before his three weeks of training, they would have been no match for him, even less now. After a while, a light shone at the end of the tunnel. Strangely, it was a bright white light. Broly thought, if there were lights underground it would have been magma, but he didn't feel any rise of temperature. Without hesitation, he flew into the light, only to step into a smooth white tunnel. Broly was stunned. Although Cease weren't dumb, they weren't on the level to build something on this level deep underground. 
Their tactics in war and their behavior showed that they had only some degree of intelligence, and except for Paragus and Cherry, there were no indication of possible communication. In general, they were just thought as beasts. Broly stopped for a moment, but he was still in his legendary form, so it didn't take more than a second for him to move forward. He currently couldn't think reasonable. He just thought it was a bit odd before proceeding to go on. With his amplified arrogance and rage, he had no sense of danger if the threat wasn't imminent. He shot through the tunnel. He didn't stop anymore as he searched for more seas to kill. After a minute of a straight tunnel, he came across a fork. He looked at both corridors to see if he could perceive any life force at either tunnel. He didn't have to investigate much longer. As he saw a scion with black liquid running through his veins rushing towards Broly from the left corridor, the scion shouted as he punched out. Broly tilted his head, evading the punch easily. He grabbed the head of the scion and slammed it into the wall. Surprisingly, the wall was incredibly tough, not giving in at all. The head though gave in on impact, instantly turning into a bloody mush. Painted the wall red with black liquid mixed in it. TCH. The left corridor it is then. He looked down the tunnel, before he again started speeding further down, not realizing that the black liquid followed and entered his body. The situation where he was attacked at a fork repeated itself numerous times. The only difference was that the enemies became stronger. An hour of this farce continued until he entered a massive white hall. A gigantic black sphere was suspended high in the air. It slowly spun as suddenly a black thread burst out, looking like a solar flare. It appeared to be a sun, except that it didn't give off any heat or light. It didn't even affect the light of the walls. But it had life force. It wasn't only massive, it was indescribable. It was truly a sun made out of life force. Broly waved his hand. A dozen of key spheres shot out of his hand, heading towards the black sun. It resembled the life force form the CE, and even Broly felt threatened by it a bit. But before they could reach the sun, a blur appeared. The key spheres were reflected, heading straight back at Broly, reaching him at an even higher velocity than he shot them out. Broly just scoffed at the display. Ha! He produced a key shockwave, sending the key spheres off course, exploding all around him. Unexpectedly, the spheres did no damage to the walls or the ground, as they were still spotless. He looked at the figure that appeared, but it was just an unfamiliar face. He was a scion with a tail. Broly detected his energy, and his life force didn't show any difference compared to normal people. With the lack of black liquid in the veins, it was obvious that this figure wasn't being controlled. The figure was frowning as he looked at Broly. The scion was mumbling something, seemingly deep in thoughts. Who are you? Broly spoke with his aura unconsciously activated. His voice rang out in the hall as it pressured his opponent. The scion squinted his eyes as he felt the pressure. I didn't expect you to be this strong already. Because of that I had to put my plan in motion prematurely. Well, it doesn't matter anymore, you are already here. Boom. Broly looked back at the entrance he came through, seeing it completely disappear. He raised his eyebrow before smiling. So? You have trapped me now, what are you going to do? Do you really think you can beat me? Beat you? Ha ha ha. I never intended to fight you. I was never strong. I don't need strength to fulfill my holy mission. He is not strong? As if on cue, the black sun began to squirm and slowly headed towards Broly. Hmph. Do you really think I will just stand here and do? He suddenly stopped talking. He couldn't move, he was stuck in place. No matter how hard he tried, he was rooted to the spot. The sun approached him steadily. It wouldn't take long for it to reach him. He looked down to his feet but couldn't see anything holding him back. In the corner of his eye, he saw something black squirm on his arm. His veins started to turn black. The black liquid that controlled all the scions he encountered was now running through his veins. A chill went down his spine. How could this be? He. <laughs> I knew that I couldn't handle you so I prepped my latest puppets. If the previous host died, the liquid inside would invade the closest living being. I especially placed much hope on your parents, at least you wouldn't erase their bodies completely right? And letting you know that they were only partially controlled would surely make you mad as well. 
you wouldn't even notice that a bit of liquid invaded your body. I especially foolproofed my plan by making it seem like it is the same as my life force collectors. I think you call them seas? Yeah, if a bit of liquid touched your body and seemingly vanished, you wouldn't suspect much now, would you? After all, the sea disappear as well. Well, after what I saw, all my thoughts were wasted. Narrator. Broly is in trouble. The sun is slowly approaching. But our hero has no way to escape. What will he do? Will he escape the sun? Or will he be devoured by it? No matter how hard Broly struggled, he couldn't move due to the liquid. He flared up his key, trying to evaporate the liquid or at least push it out. Broly didn't care for any injuries he might sustain, but just let his key rampage throughout his body. He was slowly able to push it away, but he wouldn't make it in time. The sun would reach him before he could diminish the control it had over him. He even wanted to use his life force, but he didn't know any way to attack with it, and it seemed that it fed off it, becoming stronger as it was devouring life force. That was probably the liquid's way to secure its energy source. If its host was alive, it could continue to live as well. How dare you try to take over my body? I will evaporate you to nothingness. Although he didn't know how to use it, as his situation turned direr, he began to become furious and unconsciously used his emotional energy, destroying the liquid at his fastest rate. The amount of pressure and key he gave off at the moment was unreal. The scion had a surprised face as well, feeling the pressure on his body. He wasn't even targeted by the energy as Broly focused on getting rid of the liquid, but the scion still had to distance himself from Broly. Ha ha ha, excellent. The stronger you are, the less strain your body is under after he takes control. Be reborn Broly. Accept your fate. No, I refuse. Broly glared at him. His rage was already at his maximum. His strength kept increasing until he removed enough liquid to move, but as soon as he wanted to, the liquid seemed to burn itself. Broly only felt that he momentarily lost his control over his key until the liquid vanished completely, but it was already too late. The black sun had already reached his head, enveloping it. Broly felt like he was drowning as he was stuck inside the sun. It enveloped him completely shortly after. As soon as his whole body was inside the sun, he felt that it started to invade his body. It headed straight to his key center. If it reaches it, I am completely done for. Without my key, I won't be able to fight it anymore. He already tried to push it out with his key, but its strength was overwhelming. This sun is made out of life force. I don't believe I won't be able to absorb it. Thinking about it, he immediately started his absorption. Every bit of life force that invaded his body was instantly attacked by his key separating the link it had to the sun becoming ownerless. As soon as the life force didn't belong to the sun anymore, he absorbed it into his body. The tremendous amount of life force the sun had felt endless to Broly. He couldn't imagine being able to absorb all this energy without overloading his cells. It would be essentially the same as his overflowing key problem he had in the past, only much worse. It was on a whole different level that he didn't believe that he was able to handle it. The life force he absorbed filled every nook and cranny of his body. His bones, organs, blood, muscles, skin, every cell of his body was filled with life force. It wouldn't take much longer before those cells would burst, killing him instantly. The scion frowned as he already waited for an hour for the results, but he didn't see any progress. He first wanted to wait as he planned this for years. He didn't think that he made any mistake, but it should have been done already. The only reason why it wasn't would be that it was Broly's doing. Then it hit him. He is absorbing life force. Shit. No wonder the amount of life force I got recently diminished. He was absorbing it. He panicked for a second but started to smile again. Ah, no worries. You won't be able to absorb all of it. You probably can only absorb what 1%. It will be more than enough to bring him back to life. You really gave me a surprise there. To think that your cells are able to absorb life force, what a peculiar ability. But in the end, he will take over your body no matter what. Ha 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 ha. Broly could still hear him and was utterly pissed. But he knew that he couldn't do anything anymore. He was already filled to the limits. Even his tail has grown back due to the massive amount of life force. 
He was filled to the degree where he couldn't even move his key, as it was suppressed by the ocean of life force, making it impossible for him to absorb more of it. With nothing stopping its path any longer, it slowly invaded his key center. Inside it flowed towards the Black Pearl, which was ever-present but also unmovable by anything Broly did in the past. The life force seemed to vanish after it made contact with the Pearl, but Broly could tell that the Pearl was absorbing the life force. It started to spin as it absorbed the life force and only accelerated as time progresses. Shit. Is this why he targeted me? Is this pearl another soul? Shit. If it gains more strength, it will devour my key as I did with the remnant of the original soul. If it gets stronger than me, it wouldn't take long before he takes over my whole body. I have to stop it from absorbing more. I must absorb more or prevent it from invading my key center. But how can I shield it? I can't get any key out anymore. The only way is to absorb more, but my body can't absorb any because I can't use my key. Think. Broly. Think. Wait. Can't use key? This is it. Ha 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 ha. You bastard, this is my territory. My source of key. I can't use key anywhere else in the body, but here I will never lose control. Now be obedient and be absorbed by me. He used his key in his center to attack the invaded life force before he guided it to his key source, where the key was generated. It was also the source of his life force, which offset his continuing key increase. It was the source of his ability to manipulate and generate life force. Not only that, but it seemed as it was intertwined with his key, but it was still separated from each other. This was his best shot to absorb this life force into his own source. Although Broly couldn't absorb everything that invaded his key center, it still was tremendously faster than the Black Pearl could. He started to gather the ownerless life force to his source, making it purer and richer in the process. It grew to the point that it liquefied and then slowly solidified into a green, shining pearl. It was massively tinier, but it started to grow at a rapid rate. Another hour went by and there was still no movement of Broly. The Scion became anxious as he knew that something went wrong. So much time has passed and there were still no changes to Broly's aura, which meant that Broly was still in control. This is impossible. I can clearly detect that he is already oozing with life force. It should have already exceeded his limits. But why? Why is there still no change? I have calculated everything perfectly. Even if he was ten times stronger, it would be impossible for him to absorb all this life force. What should I do? There's no way I can accomplish my mission now. I would have failed. I can't revive my lord. He unconsciously took a few steps backwards, and his body slightly trembled at this thought. No. Even if I can't revive him now, there has to be a way to revive him. If this amount isn't enough, I will gather more, even if it means to absorb an entire universe. There will be no way you can absorb it next time. Oh, I should leave. He stopped speaking as he saw the sun completely vanish. He quickly put two fingers on his forehead, concentrating on something. But before he could do anything, something made him shiver, immediately breaking his focus. He couldn't make a coherent thought. His eyelids started to twitch and sweat was appearing on his forehead. After a minute of trying to teleport away, he already drenched his clothes with sweat. Tears started to flow down his cheek as he slowly opened his eyes. He saw Broly hovering in front of him only a few tens of centimeters away. He stared at the yellow eyes that seemed to glare deep into his soul, terrifying him to his core. I am sorry, my lord. I have failed. Blood leaked out of his mouth and the lights in his eyes quickly vanished, becoming lifeless as he still looked into Broly's eyes. Broly furrowed his eyebrows. He wanted to capture the scion and force any information out of him, but he couldn't prevent the Scion from dying. It seemed that he had made a safeguard so he wouldn't be captured. Broly looked at his hands. He already reverted to his base form. He was now aware of what slumbers inside him, and he would need to make preparation to counter it. It seemed that an ancient soul slumbered inside him, and even as the legendary Super Scion, he couldn't affect it at all. It was way beyond his current power. He believed that he would at least need to become a god before he could do anything to it. Maybe he needs to use Hakai on it. Theoretically, it shouldn't be able to do anything now, if he doesn't feed it any more life force. 
Of course, he was clear on the consequences if he was wrong. He still felt threatened as he looked at it with his inner eye. It didn't increase in size, but it had a strange glow on it as it was spinning slowly inside his center. It still didn't leak any energy, but as it was absorbing life force, he became aware that it was just hiding a tremendous amount of energy. It wasn't any energy which Broly interacted with before. He put this thought into the back of his mind. He looked up and saw that he was surrounded by a bunch of seas with faces. They seemed to be attracted by his life force, but they didn't come any closer. They were frightened, but they couldn't let go of this temptation that was Broly. Suddenly, a scion with black liquid running through his veins approached from the back. The seas parted and opened a path for him. What a delightful day! I am no longer in control and now all the strength is mine. Mine alone. With this strength it will be easy for me to kill Frisia, build an empire and rule this universe. Now even a delicious prey has offered itself to me. Ha ha ha. Although we are both Scions the Lafifo Dash, he stopped talking after Broly slowly slashed down with his hand. In Posse Dash, the Scions fell to his knees. A red line appeared from his forehead down his body, dividing his body into two halves. The two have separated from each other as the two parts fell to the ground. With another swipe of his hand, all the seas in his path were cut in half. He couldn't use any key now, but his bodily strength powered by life force was able to create wind slashes which cut through them like a hot knife through butter. He casually disposed of these seas which would be able to rule over a galaxy with their strength in mere a second. He walked to the entrance the scion appeared from and proceeded, with the corpse of the culprit under his arms, to walk further inside. After the death of the scion all doors seemed to have opened, Broly didn't know why but by the way the scion killed himself, it seemed that he could do it telepathically. Now after his death all the doors went back to their default position. He also seemed to have commanded the seas this way as well. The tiny bit of intelligence they seemed to have vanished as they rampaged and even killed each other. After a while, he came across a room filled with monitors which displayed different scenes. They all showed the perspective of the seas roaming the corridors. His attention was caught by a monitor which showed seemingly different sleeping scions. They were slowly waking up one by one. Broly went on and searched this underground base until he found a room with tens of scions sitting on the ground and comforting each other. As he came into the room, he gathered the attention of the scions. They observed him. They saw that unlike them, he didn't have any black liquid inside his veins, meaning that he wasn't controlled. Some gazes became hostile. They stood up but didn't approach him. Do you belong to him? One of them shouted as he pointed at the scion under his arms. They immediately recognized him as he was the one that experimented on some of them. Belong to him? Why would I walk with him unconscious into a room of potential enemies? Are you stupid? I am here to rescue you. Now stop talking and follow me. Some of them furrowed their eyebrows in dissatisfaction. But most of them started laughing and released sighs of relief. They already saw that the one who manipulated him, dead or unconscious in the hands of this young scion. His strength must be tremendous to defeat the one they couldn't hope to defeat. That was also why they hesitated to make a move in the beginning. They followed him while chatting happily. Broly gave some orders to gather anything that seemed of importance. They encountered some seas, but they were quickly cut into pieces by Broly. The others were in awe as they saw this. The strength of this young scion was far beyond something they could have ever achieved. Even those that were confident by the new strength they gained through the experiments, they didn't think that they could defeat the one that controlled them, less the one that defeated that same person. They wouldn't withstand a second against the young scion. They all thought in unison. After they went through some corridors, they gathered all kind of information about the liquid and the seas. It said that it all had their origin from the Lord. The Lord created them so he could, in the future, take over Broly's body. He left behind an energy ball which could grant life to creatures specifically for gathering life force. The life force collectors would kill and steal as much of life force as they could until they were defeated or intentionally destroyed, as they could only increase to a certain level of strength. The life force they had gathered until that point would automatically gather to a life force pearl. 
This pearl would be attracted to the soul pearl that was placed inside Broly's body and in the end merge with it. The soul would need a tremendous amount of life force to heal the soul and awaken it. If it manages to awaken, the Lord would be able to take over the body he was in, no matter how strong the host is. The mission would have succeeded by then. Broly could feel the confidence the Lord had as he read those claims. Fortunately, the soul didn't account for the fact that Broly could manipulate life force and make the life force pearl his own. It seemed that after it entered his key center, Broly accidentally broke the pearl and pulled its fragments into his own source, essentially making his own pearl out of the parts. Theoretically, he should be able to fuse the pearl with his soul as well, making it even stronger, but Broly didn't know how he could accomplish that, as he doesn't have a clear idea how or where he should fuse it to begin with. There wasn't much information about it on the instructions. It wasn't needed, as it would have been an automatic process. The green pearl seemed to be only hardly moved by his manipulation or his key. For now, he would leave it alone. He wanted to let his body rest and digest the energy it got. Broly went into what seemed to be the science bedroom. He searched the room for any additional notes, and he found it after a while. Under the bed? Are you serious? A diary just wow. Broly read the diary while waiting for the others to complete the search. What he read about astonished him. It starts with him deify this lord. Apparently, that lord was an ancient and mighty scion. He even compared his lord with the gods of the destruction and their angels. He wrote that there were few that could match him, and was only able to be deadly injured because he was ganged up by the gods. They seemingly had feared him for his strength and his viciousness, which made them come together and fight him to the death. Broly furrowed his eyebrows as he read this. There was never anything mentioned in the series about such a terrifying enemy. The Lord was also referred to as the true Scion God, which would point to Yamoshi, but it doesn't make sense. Why would Scions still exist if the gods feared one of them this much? Why would they let Goku and Vegeta live with the strength they will show in the Tournament of Power? Broly shook his head in confusion. If it really is Yamoshi then maybe I inherited his powers and that's why I am the only one that he could take over. But what about Kale, isn't she a legendary Super Scion as well? Didn't he know about her? And how the hell does he even know about me? Isn't he a Scion from ancient times? How is he still alive and has followers? Well, it is all assuming that it is indeed Yamoshi, but what if it isn't? Maybe what he wrote didn't happen yet. Ah shit. Damn this. I can't get an answer now, maybe if I am able to interact with the gods, I will get more information. But this shows me that I can't fully rely on only what I saw in the series. This universe probably holds much more than I ever saw in a TV series. With this thought in mind, he read through the whole book. The Scion wrote about the fact that he specifically used this planet, as the space and time around it was messy. It made it easier for him to kidnap other races to this planet, as it would make him less detectable for the gods, making it easier to evade their senses. He also used the broken space to connect to other places with broken space as well. He would guide them through the clouds rift to this planet and then let them procreate so he would have an endless supply of strong races with much life force. He then fed the life force pearl with. He was also the one that delayed Broly's arrival, as long as he could, so he wouldn't become too strong. Broly's strength, he had now been actually pretty close to the science estimation. Unfortunately for him, he didn't account for the mother blood crystal Broly consumed, granting him the ability to steal the very life force which was meant to heal the soul. It was also stated that the Scion used a portion of his lord's power, but he didn't know what exactly he used, since there was nothing extraordinary on the corpse. He really wrote all of it down obediently but failed to mention his lord's name. He obviously never expected to fail, but why leave something like this out? Well, he also left out how he got to learn about this ancient scion and how to revive him. Probably just played it safe. After an hour, they were done with searching and were ready to go. Before they went to the entrance, Broly rushed through all the white corridors to double-check if there were any seas in hiding and killed them one by one. Thereafter, they went to the cave's tunnels and then out. When they flew out of the cave, some of the scions kneeled down and touched ground, letting the earth crumble between their fingers. They had lost their control years ago, it was understandable that they wanted to relish the moment. Some also showed their will to fight, 
as some of them began sparring against each other. They were much stronger than any other scions without the super scion transformation, which Broly inferred from their changed bodies. Although they were much stronger, some parts of them were completely black with the liquid. Broly didn't know if they could take out this black liquid to prevent any side effects like them being controlled in the future. All right, we will leave to our current headquarters. Follow me. Broly flew up with the group in tow. After distancing themselves for a bit, he looked back and had someone throw a life force sphere into the entrance of the cave. After a moment of silence, the whole thing blew up, erupting in a massive explosion, completely obliterating the ground of the upper levels of the cave. The corridors and the science bedroom were unaffected by this, as that part was created with an incredible tough material. The ones with faces were more intelligent than their counterparts without faces. He didn't want to go through all side caves to kill them one by one, so to prevent any troubles in the future, he wanted the whole place blown up and killed any CE that tried to escape. Broly led them towards Elpis. On their way back they came across Kana, Alia, and Taro. What are you doing here? Broly asked as he saw the other two, which were supposed to be in the city. He also looked at Kana, who was still here, where she started attacking the seas. Seemed like she listened to his orders and didn't approach any further. Taro immediately answered, Man, you really took your time. It has been several hours. I was bored to death. The suspense killed me. Are you done already? Did you leave some for me? Aaliyah shook her head. Don't listen to him. We were worried and wanted to check up on you. By the way, Aze is scouting the area. I already sent him a signal that you are back. All right, we will talk when we are back. First priority is bringing those guys behind me to quarantine. The Scions were surprised by what he said. Don't look at me like that. You still have that liquid in your body. Until we know for sure that you guys aren't a threat to the city, you are going to stay outside the city to be tested. They thought they could relax for now, but a bunch of checkups seemed to be awaiting them. After they went back to Elpis, he watched over them until a bunch of scientists were there and made tests on top of tests. He already told Jine and Daz about these new scions, and they immediately put forth their arrangements. They would probably live outside the city for a few weeks, maybe even longer. Although as proud scions they were dissatisfied with the treatment they got, they somewhat understood the city's point of view and didn't say anything. Another big reason why they didn't voice out any complaints was probably because that they were intimidated by Broly. With his strength, they unconsciously treated him as if he was the king. Broly and the other S-Fighters went to the city lord and the other leaders to report. He recounted what happened and many of them were furious to know that a scion, the newcomer's race, was at fault here for their years-long war. Broly of course didn't tell them of the soul he had inside him. That would only terrify them and make them more hostile to him so he just avoided that tiny part. Besides being pissed, they were also extremely happy that Broly confirmed to have ended the war. The information he gathered inside the underground base will be put under review and checked if they could use it somehow. They also immediately send a part of their army and scientists towards that base to make a thorough search and analyze the material that Broly mentioned. After recounting all his experience of his struggle, including the part that the Scion was trying to revive someone, their look towards Broly changed dramatically. Although they still didn't know that the Scion specifically targeted him, they were still terrified by his feeds. The fact that he slaughtered his way all the way down the underground base, encountering numerous enemies their city lord couldn't even hope to defeat, being lured into a trap and still come out victoriously. But what frightened them and the other Scions the most was about the fact that the Scion had only partially controlled other Scions and made them stronger, part of those Scions were his parents and he still killed them. Daz and Jine and the others from the older generation could partly understand Broly, as most that grew up on planet Vegeta didn't have great relationships with their parents. Kana was obviously shocked as well and looked at Broly. Even though she didn't know why, she believed that Broly wasn't as emotionless as he gave him to be. After the whole ordeal was done, the wait game started. They waited for useful information from the mastermind and the results of the tests of the Scions. The upper level of the city was excited as well. Since the mastermind had left the planet and pulled in numerous races, there had to be a way to safely leave this planet. Many of the other races were eager to leave, as they were somewhat threatened by the Scions' increasing powers. Many of the Scions wanted to leave as well, 
as they wanted to bring their race back to their glory and fight new strong opponents. Of course, Broly was one of those scions too. He knew the heights possible and wanted to experience the peak. Additionally, there was a potential time bomb in his body, which would essentially mean the death of his soul. He wanted to become stronger and get rid of it as soon as possible. He thought about using the Dragon Balls, but he didn't think that Shinran had enough power to do anything against that ancient soul. He still wanted to try, it was worth the shot. He decided that he first wanted to go to Namek and try their Dragon Balls first, as they were more powerful. Of course, he wanted to meet the main cast in action as well, so he already made plans to meet them. But this could all happen only if they could find a way out, and as long as they didn't, he trained. He also requested that the scientists upgraded the gravity chamber. It was now only able to increase the gravity by 10x the gravity they were on, which would be 1000x the gravity of Earth. He still didn't hit the limits yet as he trained under 600x, but he knew that his body was becoming rapidly stronger, especially after absorbing all the life force, the seas gathered for years. In his training he would go beyond his limits, breaking his body in the process, only for the life force to repair it afterward. He trained like a maniac, he knew that this chance was hard to come by. So, he made the best out of it. He also asked the scientists to use the material which the underground base was made out of to create him some durable weights for the future high gravity. His training room started to show his influence, as it looked more and more like a gym, but with ridiculous weight numbers on the machines. He also started, as promised, sparring with his teammates. Kana tried to explain her experience with Super Scion to the others and as a result, Taro was the first one to show signs of another breakthrough. He also finally showed Broly his ability he gained from the crystal. He was able to burn life force, giving him a short power up, far exceeding his limits. It was a heavy burden for the body, but with Broly's ability to generate life force, it was a perfect additional technique for him. Broly was obviously eager to learn this as well, but he wanted to wait until he digested all the energy, so his gains wouldn't be diminished. He estimated that it would take one or two years for him to finish it all, up until then it would be all training. It has been over four years since the war against the sea ended. All races have celebrated for weeks after the news was made public. Many of the people that used to live in villages started to emigrate from Elpis and moved back to their villages wanting to rebuild their livelihood. The population started spreading out again over the whole planet. An era of peace had been ushered after the years of war. The races that used to have ongoing wars with each other before the seas were now trading partners and allies. The crisis in the form of an outside threat trying to eradicate them all pulled the races together. Now that the races had enough place to live, even the past conflicts about territories ceased to exist. This planet was destined to flourish in the future. Given that the races traded with each other and had more interactions with each other, the advanced technology was not limited to Elpis anymore. The races lived happily together. At the beginning, the higher-ups of the races used to feel threatened by the Scions. The race was known as Warmongers, after all. After one of the Scions' strength increased to a level that the others couldn't even hope to achieve and still didn't make any moves. The races slowly accepted that those Scions didn't seem to have any intention to conquer the planet. Many even felt that they were rather approachable, except for their intense desire for battle. Of course, through the fact that a scion was responsible to end the war, it was reason for the public to have a favorable opinion about them. Although they have accepted the scions, that didn't mean that they now didn't want to leave this planet. Almost all races that were kidnapped to this planet were now thought to be extinct, and all of them wanted to rebuild what they had in the past. They wanted to let the members of their races, which were wandering in this vast universe, know that they weren't alone. With that motivation, they searched through every information that they got through the mastermind of the seas. They have found that he used the power of his lord to traverse the troublesome space at a place where it was usually the calmest. It didn't take long for them to find that place. They analyzed the space and found that it was not as calm as depicted in his notes. They came to the conclusion that because the mastermind had no reason to return to the outer universe, since Broly was already on this planet, he disturbed the space to prevent from being accidentally found. He made it almost impossible to traverse the spot he took to leave. Although the spot wasn't traversable anymore, the scientist, through analyzing the surrounding space, 
were given some information as to how it was the calmest region. With that information in mind, they started searching for other places in space that were similarly calm. The scions with the black liquid, on the other hand, were already cured after half a year. Through the notes about creating black liquid, they were able to create something to lure them out of the bodies. They also have broken the liquid down to get more information about how it was created. In the end they did find it out. The catch was that it needed a specific unknown energy which would make the liquid into a living organism. Otherwise, the liquid would dissolve into useless waste. In other words, only that Lord or someone with his energy would be able to create more of it. After those scions were cured, they were forced to integrate themselves into society. They were used to conquering planets, but now they had to satisfy themselves with sparring and training in gravity chambers. In the beginning many were dissatisfied as some of the strength stayed with them, and they felt that they were strong enough to be independent. But they were still intimidated by Broly and his crew, so they didn't voice any complaints out. After these few years, they still had the mindset of the strong rule the weak, but their war-crazed nature dimmed down a bit. Broly had been busy these past years as well. He had greatly underestimated the life force he absorbed. Only after the four years of constant training, his cells were able to digest the power and make it his own. His strength has skyrocketed in these years. His cells were strengthened to a point that almost nothing on this planet could hurt him, and that was him in his base form without key. Even if someone caught him off guard, they still had to be unbelievable strong to do any damage to him. At least on this planet, there shouldn't exist someone like that. Although his key was being suppressed by the immense life force, he was still able to guide a minuscule amount out of his body. Even through the difficulties to manifest his key outside his body, his control unexpectedly grew. Not only has his control increased, but there was also a slight change to his key. Because it hardly could leave his key center, it accumulated inside and condensed. His key was thicker than others and was unbelievably powerful. If he clashed with someone with the same amount of key, Broly would undoubtedly win through sheer power. It didn't matter if his opponent was miles above him in control. After the four years of training, he became a monster in all aspects of battle, be it his seemingly indestructible body, his precise key control, the power of his key itself or his profound martial arts. There was no one on this planet anymore that could rival him, but that didn't mean he couldn't improve. Broly knew that his strength in front of Beerus was just a joke, but he also knew that he still had unbelievable strength hidden inside his body. He didn't even master his legendary transformation yet or achieved a higher grade of it. There was also Divine Key, which was exponentially stronger than regular Key, which would make even his pale in front of it. The thoughts about these things only made him anticipate his future progress. Now that he digested the life force, his body strength growth slowed down. He already knew that this would happen, his body was still too underdeveloped after all, and he didn't have anything like life force that could boost him now. He estimated that the time he needed to increase his body strength through training would be too slow. He would gain a tremendous power up after his body reached adulthood, and the rate of his growth would be faster as well. So, instead of spending his time training in the gravity chamber, he wanted to search for inspiration in this world and focus on his key on the journey, as it would give him the highest yield for now. With the experience on this journey, he wanted to invent some new techniques that fitted him the best. He knew that this journey wouldn't be that effective as he was the strongest on this planet and nothing could probably threaten him anymore. But it was something that he always wanted to do, especially in his past life. He wanted to travel around a planet, see and experience the world in thousands of different ways. Even more so as the history of this planet intrigued him, and he wanted to unravel it and see its past with his own eyes and if he finds more fragments of the origin crystals, that would, of course, be a welcome surprise. So not taking too much time to think about it, he already said his goodbyes to Jain, Daz, his crew members and all his fellow disciples and headed out. A figure flew up a mountain and landed on its peak. The winds were sharp and cold, it was not something a normal person could endure. But the figure just stood there and looked down the mountain he just flew up. The figure was light-skinned and stood tall with over 2M of height with a well-built frame. He had golden hair and yellow eyes. He was standing there shirtless, while he wore white pants with an eye-catching red sash draped around his waist, which was secured by a golden belt with a blue gem in its center. 
He also had golden boots with a blue gem at the front, as well as golden bracelets with the same blue gem. Of course, this figure was Broly. The clothes he wore were imitated to the one he saw his counterpart wear in the movie. After wearing it himself, he kind of get where the Broly in the movie was coming from. It was very comfortable, and he felt especially free wearing it. Of course, the main reason he wore this was because he thought it looked cool. He was currently in his non-full power version of his legendary Super Saiyan transformation, and he wasn't affected by this state at all. Three years. It had been three years since he began his journey. At the beginning, he only covered small distances as he focused on trying to maintain his Super Saiyan state. After succeeding, he used it with the lowest output possible and was able to be comparable to his suppressed base form. Thereafter, he rarely increased his output, only for battles or sometimes to fly up a mountain, like now. His output was minuscule, relative to his overall strength. By now he had completely mastered the state and the transformation became second nature to him. But since this was his non-full power form, it had a limited increase to his overall strength. Now as he looked down the mountain, completely undisturbed by the winds, he decided to take on his legendary state. Until now, he avoided doing so, as his key was incredibly powerful and not as easily mastered as for other scions. He estimated that his crew members have probably achieved Super Scion full power by now, maybe even going beyond it and become a Super Scion too. He knew that transformation vice he would always lag behind, but the difference in strength made it all worth it. Feeling how much power is hidden inside his S cells, he didn't want to have it any other way anymore. Maybe he wouldn't achieve the second level as fast as others would, but his legendary state was already stronger than that supposedly superior level of normal science. With his increased mastery, he unearthed more of his cell's strength, and it looked to him like an endless ocean. He readied himself, took a deep breath and screamed at the top of his lung. His shout echoed in the wide valleys. His key output increased until the mountain peak collapsed under the pressure. Broly surrounded by a green key sphere started floating high in the air. The sphere began to shine brightly like a second green sun in the sky. For a minute it shone upon the earth until it diminished and revealed a 250 centimeters tall giant inside the sphere. Broly furrowed his eyebrows and his bulging muscles were tense. For minutes, he hovered in the air until finally yellow pupils emerged in his white eyes. The transformation and the struggle to regain conscious was burdening. Broly was panting heavily, but he had a bright smile on his face. He abruptly struck out his fist above his head and shouted out, Hell yeah! His scream unlike before not only echoed, but it caused a giant avalanche to descend the mountain and his fist strike dispersed the clouds above him. He could retain his conscious without immediately becoming a sadistic rage monster. Although he could still feel that his emotions were heightened, it was nonetheless a success. Now it was time for him to mediate and reduce his output to a livable degree. He sat down cross-legged and started his meditation. He already had experience with his predecessor state and was quick at work. Due to his ability to generate life force he was able to go days without food or water. Even oxygen was less important to him. With that in mind, he began his week-long meditation trying to master his full power state. Even with his previous experience trying to reduce the energy output of his full power state to a livable degree, first seemed impossible to Broly. But how could it be a legendary form if it was so easy to master? After a few weeks, he was able to easily go in and out of this transformation without completely losing his mind. With this new ability in hand, he restarted his journey. After all this time, he was surprised what this planet still had to offer. All kind of animals and views welcomed him every day. As he moved about, the planet was massive, but he would be done soon with his travel, as he almost covered the whole planet. In reality, after all these years, he could have already traversed the whole planet more than once. But this was about the journey itself. Through traveling this planet leisurely, he could experience the world in a different view. Since he arrived at this he had been rushing forward and loved the quick results his efforts gave, but now he enjoyed the leisure time as well when he walked through a river or climbed a mountain. But he didn't prefer one above the other, what he really liked about all this was that he would be able to decide his path and no one else. Did he want to fly up a mountain or walk against the river currents? Have a nice walk through a forest? 
or blast through it without restraint. The decision on what path and how he wanted to traverse it was up to him. Although it seemed that his gains would be slower through the lesser amount of efforts, the opposite was true. Through this new perspective he developed new techniques and his control increased tremendously. Obviously, his mental strength had the biggest increase through the constant struggle to stay completely conscious. He had gained an iron will. Nothing could sway his determination anymore. Another three years passed as he tried to master his legendary state. He had recently turned 16 and still hadn't returned to Elpis once in the last years. He was now in a wild hot spring enjoying the hot water, while relaxing his whole body, though still in his legendary transformation. He laid down as he felt like he melted away. His mastery had reached great heights. Suddenly, the volcano not far from him erupted in a splendid explosion. Tons of liters of lava descended to the earth. Broly only looked at what he would have called a natural disaster in his previous life with a smile on his face. He was quite entertained by the sight, but it wasn't something new he experienced. He looked at the volcano and suddenly had the urge to look at it from a close distance. He slowly walked up the volcano and looked into the crater with boiling lava inside. What surprised him the most was that an island was situated in the middle. What was strange about it was the fact that green trees were growing in abundance. Broly quickly approached the island to check it out. As he came closer, he seemed to have entered some kind of barrier. The temperature inside was around 20 Celsius. Quite the contrast to the scorching heat outside, Broly thought. He landed on the island and didn't feel any different from if he had landed in any other forest. The feeling he had before came back. It was urging him into one direction. So, of course, he went the other way. If his feelings urged him to go there, he probably should go there. But he didn't want to miss out on any other stuff that might be on this island. He blasted through the forest and searched every corner in high speed. It didn't take him a minute to have a rough layout of the island. It didn't take so short because the island was small, but because Broly was incredibly fast. Being confident that he didn't miss anything, he headed towards the direction that attracted him. It didn't take him long to see what his destination was. It was a 30-meter-high monumental building with colonnade on all sides. It reminded Broly of an ancient Greek temple. He stepped inside and was greeted by a big stained-glass window, depicting three different shapes. At the bottom on the same level was a red real-life heart, a green humanoid body, and a blue sun. Above those three figures was a golden triangle at the very top. Broly didn't know why, but he could feel a distinct connection between him and the heart. Looking down from the window, he saw a staircase leading into the ground. He looked around this temple but didn't find anything else in the room. He started walking down the stairs until he was enveloped in complete darkness. He snapped his fingers and a green sphere appeared inside his hand. He let the sphere fly ahead, guiding the way for him. He walked down for a few minutes until he reached the bottom of the stairs. He looked ahead and only saw a single tunnel ahead. The tunnel was about two meters wide and three meters high. It was a bit small for him. If he wanted to, he could touch the ceiling with his height. He walked for a minute until a picture illuminated the tunnel in the front. He dispersed his key sphere and stood next to the picture, looking at what was shown. It pictured a blue planet enclosed by a triangle made out of a red heart, a green humanoid and a blue sun. They were the same as the ones in the temple above. He walked further down the tunnel only to find another picture with the same planet but with a blue-whitish figure standing above the world with his arms behind his back. He didn't notice this at first, but the colors were slightly pulsating, and he couldn't help but touch it. As soon as he did, the figure seemed to be brought to life. It started to raise his arms and from him a white light spread and covered the whole planet. The light dimmed down and the previous unmoving picture was shown again. He thought for a moment and turned back, headed to the first picture and as he thought the colors were pulsating as well. He touched the heart and suddenly shadows of humanoids appeared on the planet. It grew to a degree that it filled the displayed planet until it reverted again. He headed down the tunnel again until he reached the third picture and the next ones. In total, there were eight pictures depicting a different scene. From his understanding, it should be the history of this planet and their arrival in this universe. 
First, the era of bliss where the races on the planet prospered until a figure came by and tried to destroy the planet. With the protection of those three symbols, the planet was saved, but the destroyed space sucked their planet in and traversed the distorted space. The whole travel they were covered in the lights of the three symbols, but on their way the symbols started cracking and falling apart on the journey, vanishing into the distorted space. Only a fragment of the red heart remained on the planet, while the rest disappeared. Considering what the city lord had told him about the origin crystals, those three symbols seemingly represented those crystals. A blood, spirit, and energy crystal. He could tell that the heart was the blood crystal, as for the others, he interpreted the sun as the energy crystal and the humanoid as the spirit one. It now also made sense why he would feel a slight connection with the heart, as he had absorbed a fragment of it. After observing the last picture, he walked through the tunnel until a dim yellowish light brightened the end of the tunnel. The tunnel opened into a big hall with countless lights at the ceiling illuminating the room. He looked at the ceiling, which were filled with dots. It was mostly white dots, but some dots had the colors of the symbols. There were about three of every color scattered over the ceiling. The biggest symbol was in the middle, shining brightly in a red hue. He analyzed it before his eyes widened. These dots, they are not randomly arranged. This, this picture is a star map. The big red dot is this planet. That means that the other fragment still exists? No, maybe. Although it may represent where the fragments used to be, it doesn't mean they still exist. Broly pondered for a bit before taking out a small thin rectangle. He stretched the rectangle to the size of a smartphone and hold it up. With a tap, the ceiling was photographed and displayed on this tablet-like device. This thing acted as a camera and a notebook which he brought for his journey. He wanted to have something he could keep as a reference in the future. When he was inspired by something, he would take a picture of it so he could look at it again later. He looked at the picture he made and was satisfied with it. In the future, he would visit those planets in search of those fragments. As he thought about it, he couldn't help but smile, which quickly turned into a frown. This is really a great opportunity to increase one's abilities and strength, but why would they just leave it here for everyone to review? Did they want others to find it? They seemed to worship those crystals, it would make sense if they destroyed every evidence of their location, so they wouldn't be snatched away by others. Well, whatever suits them, I will only benefit of their selflessness. He looked around the hall and couldn't find anything else besides three different pictures of humanoid bodies with threads running through them. He approached the red one and took a close look. With the second, he became more and more convinced that this depicted the method to absorb. Without hesitation, he moved to the other pictures and realized that even though they are different, they had some similarities. It was clear that this showed the method to absorb the other crystals. Broly couldn't hold his joy anymore as he laughed out loud. His laugh echoed in the hall and down the tunnel. He quickly took some pictures and burned those methods into his memory. As he only would have to follow the flow, he quickly remembered them all. Now sure that there wasn't anything left of interest, he quickly went outside. Sensing nothing unusual, he flew up and out of the barrier. He looked back and saw the island being slowly flooded by lava. He watched the island disappear in lava for a minute, before continuing his journey. After another month, he had traveled the whole planet and was not far from Elpis. He had undone his transformation a week ago, as he stagnated with his mastery. He wanted to strengthen his base again and get used to it again. In the last year, he started growing in height again. He hadn't noticed at first, but his legendary state didn't stop his body from maturing. In his base, he was now 2.1 meters in height, almost as tall as the adult counterpart from the movies. If it really depicts how tall he would grow, it would be only a few more centimeters that he could grow. It seems the additional life force had accelerated either his growth or his rate of maturing. He was standing on a tree looking at the seemingly tiny sparkling city in the distance. The only thing he carried with him was a fist-sized brown bag at his waist, hidden under his red sash, in it only his tablet. He didn't have any need for any other items. It is time to return and then hopefully leave this planet. With only his clothes and his bag on him, he walked towards the city. After an hour, he had reached the gate of Elpis. As usual, the traffic was high. He also saw more people in cars traveling around. 
compared to the war times, there were only a few patrols guarding the walls and the gate. He walked up to the gate wanting to enter. A guard squinted his eyes as he saw Broly approach. Stop! Your identification and your papers for your purpose of entering. The guard blocked his way and outstretched his hand. Humph, another one thinking that they can enter as they please. You beggars should just live in your villages. The guard thought. He looked disgusted at the dirty clothes that guy wore. Although it seems to have been expensive clothes in the past. But now there are even holes in his pants and he doesn't even have a shirt. Probably another one who couldn't make it outside after the war and now returns with the last valuables he has to get back in. He probably has it under that sash. A greedy glint appeared in the guard's eyes. Broly didn't seem to hear him. As he looked around, not slowing down, he pumped into the guard. The guard was surprised for a moment, but his lips curved upwards shortly after. The guard sprung backwards to the ground while screaming. Ah! Oh! He exaggerated screamed as he rolled on the ground while covering his face with his hands. He took a glimpse through his fingers as he thought, he, you can forget about entering. I make sure you will leave with nothing. But he didn't see what he expected. Broly seemed to be still occupied with looking around as he stepped on the guard. Uh, hmm? Oh, I didn't see you there. You shouldn't lay in the way. What happens if a car runs you over? Saying those words, Broly stepped over him and proceeded into the city. What the hell? Hold still. The guard pulled out a laser cannon out of his holster and pointed it at Broly. Seeing that Broly didn't stop, the guard screamed out. Who do you think you are? Stop right there in the name of the law. Being ignored again, the guard lost it and pulled the trigger. On contact, the shot exploded, covering Broly in a smokescreen. The guard smirked at the thought of killing that guy. Hmph, <laughs> that's what you get for disrespecting me. I decide who gets to enter the city. As the smoke settled down, the guard's expression changed into a shocked one. How? How are you still alive? The guard stammered, seeing Broly completely unharmed, staring right at him. Oh? You wanted to kill me? Broly smiled at the guard. The guard realized that he messed with someone he shouldn't have. Thud thud. His heart beat one more time before stopping never to beat again. The guard collapsed on the ground with a pain-stricken expression on his face as he gripped his chest. The whole situation created quite the commotion. Other guards showed up, but Broly had already disappeared. In the city lord's palace were dozens of new faces, all talented in their own right, but it was nothing in front of Broly as he speeded undisturbed through the corridors. He quickly arrived at his room, unlocked it with his fingerprint, and went inside. He closed his door and went into his bathroom, which was the first door to the right. He undressed and took a shower. After a hot shower, he dried his hair with a towel hanging on the side. They still put fresh towels in here? He headed to his closet in his bedroom to change into some new clothes. I wonder if I can even put them on. He opened the closet and found some battle armor being hung up, but they were far too small for him and they were for females. He put his towel around his waist and looked around. He realized that this couldn't be his room. It was decorated, with a bunch of plants and pink curtains. Did someone move inside? Broly sensed movement coming from the bed. He didn't notice someone being there at first, as he usually turned his ability to sense life force off to hone his other senses. He walked across the room towards the bed and saw a young woman hugging her blanket. She was lean but well-toned. Her black hair spread over her pillow and a brown tail wrapped around her waist. The contrast of her big butt and her smaller waist would make most men drool. She wore shorts that seemed to be a size too small, as her butt was stretching it. Her tank top did great to emphasize her bosom as well, which didn't lose out to her but at all. She turned around, stuck her rear up to the ceiling. Broly couldn't resist and gave it a good slap. His slap sent waves on her skin, as he enjoyed the tingling sensation coming from his hand. Wawa! Nice! Oh! You woke up! She pointed at Broly as she screamed out. Broly waited for her to stop screaming. It's you, Broly! You are finally back! She jumped up and hugged him. She could only reach his chest, as she was only 165 centimeters tall. Eh? Aaliyah! You have grown up! 
You should be 18 by now, right? He said, while gripping her butt. He squeezed her for a bit and enjoyed the soft, yet firm sensation, until his hand lost contact. Aaliyah escaped his grasp and had a fierce blush on her face. She covered her butt as she shouted at him. What are you doing? Grabbing your jiat. By the way, what are you doing in my room? Broly asked. She was still covering her butt with her hands, as she looked at him in disbelief and just responded. Since there were more disciples, we couldn't just let your room be unoccupied. So, I thought I would just reserve it for you. I didn't think you would just assault me when I am sleeping. Oops and thanks, I guess. Do you at least have my GI from back then? I kinda need something to wear. Ha! Huh. She looked at him up and down, before her blush spread to her ears. Yes, wait here! She shouted out before rummaging her closet, until she pulled out his white GI and threw it at him. Broly caught it and put the pants on, as he couldn't get into anything else. At least go to the bathroom. Aaliyah shouted and turned around. I need to get new clothes ASAP. Well, for now I let my ankles get some air and who needs a shirt? Anyway, Broly said as he looked in a mirror on the wall. Let's go eat something. I am starving. Hmm. She stole a few glances at him. Let's eat, you can stare later. I, all right. Let me change first, while you wait outside. Aaliyah pushed him out of the door, before slamming it shut. He leaned against the wall and looked at his hand. I guess my libido was affected by my body. As Broly waited for Aaliyah to come out, a few younger disciples walked past him. They looked and whispered among themselves. They seemed to think that he was about to have a bad time. Slowly, a small crowd had formed around Broly. Suddenly the crowd parted making way for a mature-looking woman. She had shoulder-long smooth red hair and long legs. Like Aaliyah, she was well-toned. Although her sizes were comparably smaller, she gave off a kind but also fierce vibe in her battle armor. She was slightly taller than Aaliyah. As she walked towards Broly, many of the boys were staring at her swaying butt. Although she gave off kindness, no one seemed to dare to approach her. Hello, Broly. Long time no see. She smiled brightly at him. Kana? Man, what the hell happened to you girls? HM? What do you mean? She tilted her head, confused. You both became really cute. I can't help but feel tempted to. What? Me cute, I he. He looked at her flustered expression with a smile. How have you been? Being spoken to, she came out of her dazed state. I have been great, thanks to you. HM? I have been away for the last six months, though, and before that I only trained you. True, and that was the best thing someone could have done for me. To be honest, after you forced me to see the truth, I was kind of lost and wanted to make it up to you, be useful. After the time you trained me and just left to go on your journey, I realized that you didn't want anything in return. Sigh. It really took me too long to realize that I had a place where I belonged to. People who supported me unconditionally... But I did try to kill you so dash, which only showed how truly upset you were about me. Maybe you really wanted to kill me, but the fact is that you saved me instead. If you hadn't meant it, my life would probably have been worse than death. Only with your truest intent, you were able to pull me out of that dark place. This is why I wanted to thank you. She stepped closer and held his hands, looked him in his eyes and smiled. Broly, thank you for saving me. Thud thud. Broly could hear his heart beat, looking into her sincere eyes. There it is again. My emotional energy is agitated. The flow of energy is going down to my life force center and... The door suddenly opened and Aaliyah stepped out, interrupting Broly's thoughts. He looked at her and saw Aaliyah in her battle armor. Although he saw that armor numerous times in the past, he couldn't help but feel happy, as it was tightly hugging her figure. Kana distanced herself after Aaliyah came out, but still had a bright smile on her face. Aaliyah moved her squinted eyes between the two. All right, let's go. Broly turned around and started walking, as the girls followed behind, each of them on one side. Broly was leading the two and headed towards the cafeteria. The crowd parted a path for them. Only a group of three scions seemed determined to stand in their way. Aaliyah, who is that? 
I already said that I won't tolerate any other male friends of yours. You are my future wife. You should accept your fate. We are the future royalties and not a nobody like him should be near you. We are the future royalty dash, the guy in the middle, kept babbling on and on. Broly didn't seem to bother at first, but as he said that he was a nobody, Broly fixated his gaze on him. Aaliyah and Kana looked at each other and could read each other's expression. This will not end well. A nobody? His eyes turned yellow. The fellow felt like the gaze pierced through him, as his back was getting wet from sweat. His knees became wobbly, as he took a few steps to the side. I am a legend, Broly said to him as he passed by. The guy fell to the ground and seemed to leak a bit. Aaliyah caught up to Broly and wanted to explain that kid's identity. Broly that kid Wadash, I don't care. It was a short answer, but it conveyed much more than it appeared. Aaliyah understood what he meant. He didn't bother, no, it should be that he thought of the politics and identities of people as insignificant. Broly was always striving for strength. It should be obvious that he doesn't value arrogant people who rely on their background. Aaliyah thought about something Broly said to Taro when they were training together. You are chatting away about how you are confident that you will be the strongest. But it is only arrogance when you aren't able to back it up. Of course, Broly beat Taro up afterward. As she reminisced about the past, she saw Kana do the same with a slight smile on her face as she gazed at his back. She looked at Broly and thought that his shoulders seemed to be broader. They quickly arrived in the cafeteria, got some food and started to eat away. While they were devouring their food, unlike their previous imposing image they displayed, Broly asked them about Taro and A's. They told him that they were in space investigating a rift. It seemed that it was quite stable and could potentially be used to leave this planet. Since it is dangerous in space, they sent the strongest up there to analyze it. Aaliyah and Kana were supposed to be there as well, but they had just come from another mission which ruled them out for now. The majority of the Scions who had the black liquid inside them were also sent up into space and the trip usually took a few months. They were eager to experience a thrill and were bored to hunt down wildlife. So they jumped at the first invitation to go investigate a dangerous area with the additional reward of finding a way to leave this planet. Broly then asked them about their progress in their mastery of their Super Scion. After overcoming their initial difficulties of becoming a Super Scion, Aaliyah was the fastest to gain strength afterward, quickly surpassing Kana. Taro was close behind her strength-wise and A's lacked behind the most. Although he still gained Super Scion shortly after the others, his overall strength was the weakest among them, but he could close the gap to Taro in a fight, as he was more of a strategic fighter. Against Aaliyah and Kana, he had more difficulties as they weren't relying solely on their strength, unlike Taro. Now after a few years of mastering Super Scion, Aaliyah and Kana broke through the next level, attaining Super Scion 2. It appeared that Kana was now very good at using her emotions and was quickly able to reach the next level with the advice Broly had given them in the past. Aaliyah was just talented and was able to go to the next level after training to the extreme. Taro and A's were on the verge of breaking through, but they still needed some time to do so. Broly estimated that they should be only a bit weaker than Kakarot and Vegeta in the Bu Saga. Did anybody else show up that can turn Super Scion? Or at least have the potential to become one? Not really the generation after us are rather weak to be honest. The strongest hovers around 400,000 and he is already 15. It will take a while before someone talented shows up again. Kana continued with a frown. After the war there was no external threat and with no one challenging us, the new generation got laid back. They don't have a sense of threat and think of themselves above everyone else, only because the other races give us some face. It starts to be annoying talking to them. Don't you send them to do missions? Broly asked as he became more dissatisfied with what he heard. Well yes, but only that are far below their strength. The upper level doesn't want to lose more of the younger generation, as we are still few in numbers. TCH. How does it help to have numbers, if we are too weak to defend ourselves? Broly complained. Kana gritted her teeth as she spoke. They entertain the thought to stay here. What nonsense. We are proud science. Have they forgotten what race they belong to? Broly slammed his fist on the table, instantly turning it into dust. Aaliyah began to speak after the dust settled. 
Broly the father of the kid you beat up was from the leader of the Department of Trade. He and a bunch of other Scions have made a pact with some of those who had their strength risen through the Black Liquid, to take control of the headquarters. We got wind that they prepared for the moment we went through the rift. How did you get to know of this? And why didn't you do anything if you knew about it? We still have many loyal eyes in other apartments. They are especially loyal to Jine, as she had saved many lives back in the day. We haven't gotten any concrete evidence. We only know that it stems from the father, since he is one of the weaker scions, who would be in trouble if we made contact with the outside world again. Not only that, but we think that he fears to lose his power as soon as we do. But we can't just imprison them without evidence. It would cause displeasure among the other scions and Dash. You sound like a human. Human? Who told you that we need evidence to justify our actions? Eh? The city lord said that most races would become displeased with a government that suppresses other opinions and since our race was becoming gentler, we thought it would be a good idea to listen to him dash, indeed. He's right, the city lord is wise, but he's not a scion. He won't understand us, just because he read about us. Although we became more laid back and gentler, we are still scions. Even the kindest scion would feel his blood boil, seeing an epic battle. The will to strive for strength and battle is deeply rooted in us. Only because we are in peace doesn't mean we have changed. As for that guy and his group, they are not fit to be called scions. It seems I have to remind our race who we are. Word went around that the former champion and the savior of Perdidas came back from his journey. Rise was one of the first scions that heard of Broly's return from a subordinate. It was reported that Broly had humiliated his son in front of a crowd, going so far as to make him piss himself in public. Rise was of course furious when he heard about it. He wanted to take revenge, but he knew that no one was able to harm Broly or his friends. Rise thought using politics to pressure or put restrictions on him would be of no effect. Going by the addicts Broly showed in the war, it wouldn't be far-fetched if Broly killed him in a fit of rage. Rise needed to play this carefully, he needed to wait until Broly and his team went through the rift and then disrupt the space inside. The best case scenario would be Broly's death. The worst case would be that he wouldn't be able to return. Either way, with Broly and company out of the way, he would be able to take over and rule this planet. A few days passed until Rise heard about some leaked information. It appears that Broly and his crew, as well as a bunch of other scions, would be traveling into the rift tomorrow. They haven't released the news yet, as they didn't want the others to get their hopes up yet. Rise knew that if he wanted Broly to be gone for good, he needed to disrupt the space moments after they entered, or else he would have crossed the rift unharmed. Even if Broly managed to survive by crossing it, it would at least give him years until they found a way back in to come up with a counter plan. The next day a spaceship shot into the air to space, Rise saw this and immediately sent the strongest ones he had a deal with up with his own spaceship. Although it wasn't as fast as other spaceships, it was able to conceal itself, which fitted this mission perfectly. He looked into the direction Broly's spaceship flew. So, what if you are the legendary Super Scion? I will rule this planet. A few hours later the group, he sent, reported back that they accomplished their mission and would be heading back. Rise started laughing manically and ordered his troops to start their revolt. He was euphoric about the prospect that he would soon be the new king. He only needed to kill Jine and Daz, as they were the most invested in the ideas of leaving this planet. He wasn't confident to convince them to come over his side. But after he disposed of them, no one then would be able to stop him. With his elite team and all his hidden allies following him, they first headed towards Daz's dojo, as Daz would usually train the next generation at this time. It was the perfect place to start his new rule, with the next generation as his witness. Daz, your time has come. But don't worry, it would only be a painful death, he said aloud as he entered the room. He swung open the door and froze at the entrance. He looked stupid, frozen in place with his mouth wide open. This is I'm impossible. What greeted him were hundreds of scions. The room was big as it was usually used for fighting. It could easily hold a few hundred people without making it seem too crowded. The dojo was a bit offside so he wasn't able to know that most, including Jine and Daz had gathered, but this wasn't why he was shocked. It was because of the trio in the middle that stared at him. 
Broly had a sneer on his face as he waited to let the shock sink in. He was back in his iconic clothes as he majestically stood there, looking down on Rise. You are supposed to be in the rift, they said Dash. Well, with how weak-willed they were, it was easy to force them to say a few words. Rise knew that this wouldn't end well if he stayed. He looked around to find a way to escape. He saw that the crowd didn't seem to be filled in with everything. Before he could do anything with it, Broly appeared in front of him and grabbed him by the neck like a chicken and lifted him up. Kana, as if teleporting, emerged behind the group that followed Rise and blocked the entrance. Broly still held Rise by the neck as he moved towards the center of the room. He looked around and waited until the crowd calmed down. You probably don't know what Rise's plan was. He wanted to take advantage of the fact that my team and I went inside a rift and disturbed the space inside, essentially trying to kill or at least lock me out. He tried to do so because he wanted to rule this planet but feared me. The crowd exclaimed after hearing this, and hushed whispers resounded out in the crowd. Silence! This is not why I have gathered you all here, to witness this fool's death. W. Wait! Don't kill me! Rise was able to get those words out, begging for his life. His son suddenly burst inside the room and rushed towards Broly. Let my father go! Broly snapped Rise's neck and threw his corpse towards the approaching sun. Following with a key blast, the son didn't even have the chance to say anything else. As the father, son duo directly disintegrated. Kana followed suit, killing the rest of the group. Most of the next generation screamed out in shock, as they just witnessed one of their leaders being killed in front of their eyes. The older generation only widened their eyes, seeing the decisiveness of Broly. Broly looked at the older generation and continued speaking. I know most of you now think of every life as immensely important, as our race was on the verge of extinction. After living under the constant threat of the CE, you started bonding more with your family members and with it you lost your edge. I don't tell you it is wrong and that you shouldn't value the surrounding ones, but you have to know who we are. Everybody here knows the thrill of the fight, some more, some less but it is still present in every one of us. It is something that is deeply rooted within us. Without a doubt, our future generation will want to strive for greater heights in the vast universe. If the time comes when that spoiled generation moves out and encounter different races, they will be slaughtered like sheep. Only because we didn't guide them right, he let his gaze wander the crowd. I am already more than capable of killing Frisia with one punch, but he wasn't any near the peak of the universe. There are countless strong experts and even gods that can wipe us out in seconds. We aren't strong, but we science have so much potential that we could rule the whole universe. To be honest, I get why that weakling wanted to become king and rule this planet. It is very enticing to be in power, but as you could see, no matter the schemes and plans he made, it was all meaningless after being confronted with real strength. Broly saw that they were attentively listening to what he was saying. Without strength, we are just chicken waiting to be slaughtered. Now I want to ask you something. Are we chicken? No! The crowd erupted in a scream as they waved with their fist, especially the older generation, as it seemed that they now let all their pent-up emotions out. Then what are we? We are science. We are the strongest. All kinds of shouts sounded out in the room as they hyped each other up even more. From today onwards, I will be the one with the last say. I will lead you to glory. He struck his fist up and released his key and his aura. The whole room trembled, and the crowd erupted in cheers as they chanted his name. Broly! Broly! Hours later, after the crowd calmed down and dispersed, Aaliyah went to Broly who was back in his training's chamber all sweaty, indicating that he just had an intense workout. I thought you would rush out and kill him after I told you about everything. But you instead waited and lured all of his hidden pieces out. Well, it would have taken longer to investigate every single scion after Rise had been exposed. Didn't want to waste my time with this. Nevertheless, it was a strategic move, fitting for a leader. Broly, you outdid me. They already hail you as the new king. I first wanted to become the sole leader, but now it seems I won't be able anymore. Sai. Who said you can't? Broly grinned. Broly took her hand and pulled her closer. He embraced her with his hands on her lower back. 
He slowly glided one hand down to her rear and grabbed it. He indulged in the soft feeling in his hand. This time she didn't resist. In contrary, she leaned herself into his embrace, which only fired him more up. Her face took on a bright red color and said almost inaudible, I don't think I am ready for kids. Broly was a bit stunned as she looked into her eyes. He, we don't have to have kids. I should tell you, I noticed that since a while back my emotional energy seems to be easily agitated, which amplifies my lust but don't worry I still have control over it. If I don't want to get you pregnant, I just won't supply it with life force. It is rather simple, honestly. You don't want kids? Then why do you want a shaboink? She asked while tilting her head in confusion. Although she asked, he was equally confused by it. For the pleasure, of course. What has pleasure to do shaboinking? Eh? You are 18 already, don't you have like, huh, solo experience already? Solo experience? About what? She looked up to him as she was genuinely asking. Oh boy. Cough. All right. Let me ask you something. Suddenly the door swung open revealing Kana who was walking inside. Broly and Aaliyah were a bit flustered by the sudden entrance and distanced themselves from each other. Kana slowed down as she approached the two with a smile on her face. Did I interrupt you guys? Cough. No. We were just done. Broly answered quickly. Oh good. Considering the position you two were in, I thought Aaliyah was about to climb you. Broly was scratching his cheek as he heard that. Climb? Yeah, you know, climbing the tower, ride the animal. What are you talking about? Aaliyah was a bit bumped out since a while now. She didn't seem to understand what the two were saying. Kana looked at her and then at Broly with a raised eyebrow. Broly only shrugged his shoulders. Ah, I think I know where the problem lays. Aaliyah who told you about shabowinking? Eh? Is that important? Daz told me. She was embraced, but still answered. Your father, huh? You know, since Scions are constantly in war and enjoy the fights, Scions don't really seek out pleasure in other things. We only see shabowinking as a way to reproduce, but other races usually treat it like we treat battles, seeking it out almost any time they can. Usually with someone they are in love with, as it is an intimate thing. So, I think Broly didn't approach you with the intention to have kids. He was clearly lusting after you, when he pulled you closer, Aaliyah pondered about it. She still couldn't understand how one would be able to enjoy creating children. Broly was confused. How do you know that I dash? I peeked. She said with a bright smile. At first glance it seemed innocent but taking a closer look one could see the lewdness in her expression. She tries to hide. Aaliyah you don't have to overthink it too much. To be honest, I only learned it after Broly told me to gather information and stumbled upon it. I asked some of the other races and from other scions in my age. They pretty much confirmed the difference. I did intensive research for Broly, and it seems that is also one of the reasons why we are considered a warrior race. Only with peace, scions start searching for other things to replace our desire for battle. The greatest example would be Rise. He seemed to prioritize political power over the thrill of the fight. To know what I am talking about, you need to experience it yourself. Later on, you can have some solo experience and learn your body better by yourself. Aaliyah said slightly seductive at the end, as she licked her lip. But how does one dash, I will show you. Kana moved behind Aaliyah and pulled her closer, embracing her from behind. She gently touched Aaliyah's sides. Kana then wrapped one arm around her waist, pulling her as close as humanly possible. Her other hand stroked Aaliyah's behind, before slowly gliding her hand to the front, guiding her hand over her knee up her inner thigh. Aaliyah twitched by the touch and became a bit anxious. She suddenly closed her legs, trapping Kana's hand in between, while evading Broly's lustful stare. Her whole face, up to her ears, were already brightly red. The whole time, Kana was staring at Broly with a provocative gaze. Trying to rile him up even more, she pulled Aaliyah's face towards hers. She leaned in to give Aaliyah a kiss. Again, the door swung open and Jain stepped in. The trio startled by the sound looked at the door, frozen in place. Cough. I think I will come again later. Jain said with an awkward smile and slowly backed out of the room. No, we were already done. Aaliyah escaped Kana's grasp. 
Although there was nothing to fix, she quickly tried to readjust her clothes before continuing, still with a red face. We wanted to go out now anyway. Do you need something, Aunt Jine? Jine looked at the three before answering, well, we still need to come up with the future government. Since Broly is now declared king by the public, we have to at least get the basics right. Broly's emotional energy was filling up his whole body at the moment. He didn't want to stop, but this was something which needs to be addressed as soon as possible. All right, what are we waiting for? Then, let's go. He had mostly mastered his legendary state, to a degree where it wouldn't affect his rationality anymore. His decision-making wouldn't be influenced just because he was horny. There was a time and a place and now was certainly not the time. He also thought it would be good to prevent unwanted misunderstandings, as Aaliyah needed some lessons from Kana. Kana was a bit disappointed that the whole mood was destroyed and ended so soon, but she quickly pulled herself back together. There would be plenty of opportunities in the future. By the way, since when did you guys forget how to knock? My trainings room is not an open market. Well, your door sign is green, the one with your number on it. You have to turn it red from the inside if you don't want to be disturbed. Jine pointed at the number left to the door. I forgot that. It has been a while since you have trained here. There were some changes made. Aaliyah and Kana can teach you everything if you have another spar. Kana was smiling brightly, obviously undisturbed or rather happy by what Jine said. Unlike Aaliyah who was fiddling with her hands, they all then went outside and headed towards where the other leaders were waiting. For a few hours they discussed what rules and how the future government should be shaped. Broly was disinterested with the whole logistics, details and such, so he wanted to maintain the current order. In the end, it was decided that he could assign people into the head positions of the departments if he wanted to, but he wouldn't dictate how exactly everything would run. It would be managed by the departments on their own. Broly would only be consulted for mayor direction changes or when mayor problems occurred. Basically, he would show the general direction the race should take, and everything else would be handled as before. The only difference now would be the contact between other races in the universe, as he would be the go-to person for a leader's talk. Additionally, if another putsch occurred, they would need to handle Broly first, as he was the symbol for the current government. After all was said and done, they all went home. Broly saw that Kana was pulling Aaliyah by her hand towards her room. Broly could only anticipate the future. He thought Aaliyah would need some time to relearn the meaning of the intricacies of shabowinking. Kana, on the other hand, Broly grinned at the thought. He was also informed that they would receive some news about the rift soon. With all what happened today, he was way too excited to head to bed now. He instead went towards the training's rooms. Just before he entered his room, he heard someone give off short shouts while hitting something. Obviously, Someone was training a few rooms away, but he saw that the person didn't close the door. It was late at night, he wanted to do the sleeping a favor, as training could turn out to be extremely loud. He went up to the door and took a glimpse inside. He went up to the door and took a glimpse inside. He saw a young woman with bluish skin and violet hair. She reminded Broly of a younger-looking version of Widowmaker from Overwatch. He had met her before when he rescued her after she escaped from the attack from seas. Broly already heard that the city lord hosted another tournament for older people, but he wouldn't have thought that she could become so strong that she was scouted as the city lord's disciple. Before he could close the door, he was spotted by her. She stared at him with a widened eye. She ran up to him. She stood a few meters away and gave a salute to him. Sir Broly, it is an honor. She was almost shouting at this point. Hey ahem, Violet. It has been 12 years already, hasn't it? Seems like you made tremendous progress. Yes, sir. Although the seas are gone thanks to you, it doesn't mean there are no other threats. I want to be at my best if we get attacked one day once again. She spoke with conviction. Broly smiled. People like her, who give their best no matter the situation, will push a civilization to new heights. Just call me Broly. Keep up the good work and remember to have enough rest between your sessions. Those are as important as the workout itself. Understood? See Broly. Broly closed the door and headed towards his room. Violet still stood in salute, with utmost admiration still lingering in her eyes as she looked at the closed door. I knew he was great, but after becoming a disciple and heard about his feats, 
Broly is not only the greatest battle genius but my savior and the savior of the whole planet. He rushed into the base of the sea alone and slaughtered every single last of them. What a sight that would have been. Violet thought. Broly went inside his training room, closed the door and looked around. After a while, he found out how to turn the sign red and went up to the gravity control. Now that he thought about it, it was weird that no one else had claimed this room. He looked at the options. Surprisingly, it started from 500G upwards to 1500G. They had risen the upper limits, but he wondered why they removed the lower options. Not wanting to ponder about it any longer, he turned it on and started training. The next morning, he stepped outside, still sweating all over. His clothes were again torn numerous times. Couldn't handle the intense training he completed every session. He needed to find other clothes that wouldn't be damaged that easily. He walked towards a famous armor shop in the city center. They made high-quality armor for the elites of all races. On the way, he attracted the crowd's attention with his tube 12M of height, as he was easily spotted. Not many races were tall in the city, so he especially stood out. Few people knew of his identity, and it quickly spread like wildfire. Some even tried to approach him, but as soon as he saw that, he released his aura. Everyone without exception made way for him, not able to approach closer than two meters. He walked inside the shop and was immediately greeted by numerous armors, resembling different forces of the universe. He saw the armor in the style of the Galactic Patrol and also armor made after Frisia's forces. One piece in particular stood out to him, a black chest armor with a green midsection and shoulder pads, corresponding black armbands and black boots with white borders. The toes on the boots were green as well. It looked almost identically to the one in the new Broly movie. He pointed at it and said, I will take this. The shop owner, who was reading what seemed to be the news, didn't look up and just said the price. 100 energy crystals. I will take the purple pants and that green fur as well. 150 then. Go to the Scion headquarters and say that Broly owes you money. They will pay you. Without waiting for a response, he flew up, wanting to leave. The shop owner saw this. He screamed out thief and pressed a button under the counter. The armor in Broly's hand suddenly lit up in blue lightning, enveloping it completely. He looked through his items and removed a small device on the inside of the armor and crushed it. The lightning ceased, and he flew away. The shop owner looked with widened eyes at Broly, who was completely unfazed by the safety measurements. Did he say his name was Broly? The, the savior? As Broly flew towards the palace, he noticed that many on the ground were pointing at him. He looked around and saw that he was the only one flying. Did they put restrictions on flying? While he was thinking this, a group of five guards flew at him. Stop! You have violated the law! For were rushing at him, ready to engage him at any second. Stand down! What seemed to be the leader screamed out, shocking the other four guards. Sir Broly, I'm sorry about that. Not many know how you look like. That's why we got called by several citizens of your actions. They don't know how I look like? Yes. You never had a public appearance except for the tournament and the war, of course. But that is only a small part of the population and mostly the war veterans. If that is the case, I think it is time to spread a picture. Thanks a lot. See ya. Take care, sir. Broly shot through the air towards the palace. He quickly arrived at his new room. It was not far from his old one. This section of the building in general was where all the elite's rooms were, and this one was a new room specially made for him as a permanent residence. He went inside, took a shower and put on his new clothes. He stood in front of the mirror and examined himself. In the past years, he was constantly outside wandering. He had attained a healthy tan. Broly thought that he came close in appearance in his base form to the one in the new Broly movie minus the scars of course. He stretched a bit, trying to adapt to the new armor. He previously went around shirtless all the time, so he needed some time to adjust to wearing one. He stepped outside and saw Kana waiting for him beside his door. Her eyes wandered up and down, as she reviewed Broly's new clothes. I prefer no chest armor, but it is nice looking, and the tight pants really suit you, she said while staring at his crotch. She looked like she would start drooling any time now. After knowing about Scion's disinterest in shabbowinking, 
Broly thought that Kana had to indulge herself in pleasure for the last years, if she reacted to him in this manner. Thanks. Are you only here to compliment me on my new clothes? She didn't seem to react to his question, only coming out of her days when Broly snapped his fingers in front of her eyes. HM? Uh, yeah, we got news that you took some clothes from the shop in the city center. You know the suit is actually made for you. The shop owner said that it was a thank you for saving the planet. He also apologized for electrifying you. Really? That's nice. Pass him my thanks. Anything else? We'll do. Yes, we got news from the team in space. We thought you might want to look at the data. Sure. Lead the way. Shortly after, they arrived at the observatory. Leaders of other races were already present as they discussed the data present. They noticed that Broly entered the room and many started walking towards him. Your Majesty Broly, congratulations on becoming the new king of the Scions. Many spoke out and congratulated him and wanting to deepen their alliance. I have not been crowned yet, but thank you. He then proceeded to look at the data the team responsible for analyzing the rift sent. He looked through it all, and it looked that everything seemed to be stable enough for travel. The time inside was the same outside as well, erasing the worries coming out of the rift far in the future. The only problem was that they couldn't analyze the whole rift, meaning that there might be difficulties deeper inside. The teams now in space are coming down in a few hours. Then they will report anything that they might have noticed but couldn't record down. There had been a few potential pathways, but this seemed to be the most stable of them all. A few scientists have already made a few devices that could stabilize the rifts to some degree, but they would have to enter one to run more tests. If the investigation crew give a positive evaluation, it might be time to leave the planet. The leaders were eager to explore the rifts. If they could securely stabilize it, they wouldn't need to leave the planet behind but could use it as their headquarters. The distorted space around the planet would prove useful as a defense. If someone wanted to attack this planet, they would need to go through that rift, making this planet easy to defend. A few hours later, a giant spaceship came down and landed near a small crowd. Broly and the other leaders were already waiting for their return to greet them. Shortly after landing, figures started emerging from the spaceship. Tens of scientists and soldiers came out, many of them were scions that volunteered for this mission. They were happily conversing as they went down, which gave hope to the leaders for more good news. Broly saw Zinjo and Blitz come out as well. Broly went ahead and greeted them. They were surprised to see him after all these years. Zinjo became unusually tall with his 2.5 meters of height, he towered over most people around. Blitz seemed tiny on his side, even though he could be considered tall among the races with 1.8 m. Zinjo with his size gave an imposing figure, especially with his four arms. He stood in front of Broly with a big smile on his face. He shook Broly's hand. Man, it has been a while. You could have at least shown up once these past years. Zinjo's voice was booming and very deep. It only added to his imposing image. Ha ha ha, what can I say? There were just too many interesting things to explore. Hey Blitz, still fast as ever. Blitz gave a smile as well. Of course, I would have claimed to be the fastest on this planet, if it weren't for a particular person. That reminds me you have to show us this legendary Super Scion transformation that everyone talked about back in the day. We only heard rumors, but we never got to experience it firsthand. Zinjo added, Sure, next time, though. Gotta go greet my team members. He said his goodbyes and headed to Taro and A's who helped to unload. You not gonna greet your king? Broly said with a smug expression. Taro and A's turned around and had a shocked expression on their face. You are back. Taro screamed and pointed at Broly's face. Broly quickly grabbed his finger and bent it slightly backwards. What did I tell you about pointing fingers at me? Ow, ow, ow. I am sorry, won't happen again. Broly let go and Taro nearly fell backwards. He rubbed his finger with a pained expression. Hey Broly, good to see you. A's said, gave Broly a nod and proceeded to unload. Broly had a bitter smile on his face. A's was always the more serious one and if he had a mission, he would carry it out first. Diligent as ever. A's had lean muscles and was of average size with 1.7 M. 
If he put on a bigger pullover, one wouldn't even notice that he was ripped. Taro, on the other hand, was rather tall with 1.9M and was a bit bulkier but still on the lean side. They both had a healthy tan. By the way, what do you mean with greeting our king? Since when do we have a king? Taro asked. Well, since yesterday and guess who king is? Broly puffed out his chest and put his hands on his waist. What? No way. You were king? Taro screamed out in disbelief. Aze also stopped in motion as he looked at Broly with widened eyes. Ha ha ha. Who else? That's insane. That's really, well doesn't matter if I become stronger than you. Position doesn't mean a thing anymore. So, I guess the future generation will be put into harsher environments? Aze asked. He gave his box to another soldier. Of course. We need to get stronger as a race. I will talk about it after I was crowned. Naturally, I allow you to witness the birth of the new king. Taro rolled his eyes as he heard this. A's on the other hand had a glimmer in his eyes as if he wanted to ask Broly something. Before Broly could ask him what he wanted to say, the leader of the Myrmidons called Broly to come, as they now had the information needed. We will talk about it later, have work to do. Broly turned around and headed to the building. Can't believe it. Our team leader became our king. Taro said to Aze, as they looked at Broly leaving. Hmm? I thought it would inevitably happen. You should know how proud he is to be a scion. Sooner or later there would be something that he would be dissatisfied with. And with his strength it was only a matter of time that he would take control. Oh, yeah you're right. Besides, with his momentum, one would naturally want to follow him. The charisma he naturally gives off is awing. He will be an important figure, not only in the history of us scions, but in the whole universe, that I know as well. His strength alone makes his rise something that can't be stopped anymore. True. All right. Enough talking. More unloading. Broly was sitting with the other leaders, as they listened to what the head scientists simplified for them about the rift. The space around the rift is stable, so there shouldn't be any major changes inside the rift. The time inside, as we have already sent in the data, is about the same as outside. It is only about twice as fast inside, which compared to the other stable rifts is the tiniest difference. We didn't pick up any unusual energy inside, and there seems to be no physical obstacles. The only problem we have is the space inside. Although the space around the rift stabilizes it, it only prevents changes. That does not mean it is stable inside. From what we have gathered it seems to be rather turbulent inside, but our current ships are theoretically able to handle it. Of course, it will be better if there is someone who can lessen the burden on the ship's shields in events of emergency. We can't see through the whole rift so we don't know if there is anything else in the way, but this is something the other rifts have in common. In conclusion, this rift is the best shot we have to get out, be it the danger level or the time difference. The leaders were excited to hear that. There were some who seemed to be pessimistic about this rift and wanted to search for another one. It has been ten years since the war. It is time to move forward. I will be on the first ship to ensure that there are no mishaps. Broly suddenly voiced out after the leaders were making a commotion. The room quickly became silent and looked in his direction. Even if the space is too turbulent for the ship, I will be able to handle it. Besides, we only need to get inside to run some tests, we don't need to traverse it. We can't possibly allow the King of Dash. I am not King yet. Prepare the ship and a crew. It would be best if you send stronger people so they survive longer in an emergency. Again, no one made a sound until a cough sounded out. Alright, we will do as he says. If we truly want to get out of here, we need to take some risks. The city lord said out loud. Best would be to send part of the group that just came down up again as they already have experience. Besides, many of them are strong warriors. But for now, they need some rest. How about a week's time? Then we will send you into the rift and hopefully run some positive tests. The leaders dispersed and Broly went back to the city lord's palace and headed straight towards the cafeteria. As he thought, Taro, A's, Zinjo and Blitz were eating their stomach full. He got some food as well and sat at their table, opposite of Zinjo. Greetings, your majesty. What an honor that you would sit at this table of peasants. Zinjo grinned as he saw Broly sit down. An honor for you it is. 
Broly said with a serious face before grinning and tucked in his food. Ha ha ha. Oh man. Well, how was it? You have a week of time. Broly said with a mouthful. Oh boy. All right then. Are you sure you are king? Zinjo said seeing Broly's eating behavior. Gulp. Do you really want to know? Broly released his aura and made everyone on the table shiver. Okay, we get it. Zinjo, stop provoking him. Taro said while waving his fist at Zinjo. While they were messing around, chatter came from the corridor. A girls group came in consisting of Aaliyah, Kana, Violet, Yanari and a half-naked tan woman with gold stripes on her body and horns on her head. She was the succubus Taro had defeated in the tournaments. She seemed to become even more alluring and more adept at seducing people as she swayed her hips while walking, easily attracting Zinjo's and Blitz's attention. Taro saw her and immediately stood up and waved towards her. Hey Vara, I am back. Vara ran up to him and pushed him back on the seat and quickly sat down beside him. Unexpectedly, she seemed to be rather shy and reserved. She took a few glances at Taro while eating from his plate, while he just grinned stupidly. Aaliyah quickly took the spot beside Broly while smiling brightly at him. Yanari sat down beside Zinjo and Violet sat down beside her. Kana squinted her eyes as she saw Aaliyah take up the only available spot beside Broly. But a sly grin appeared shortly after. She jumped over the table and gently flew down, squeezing herself onto Broly's lap. She then looked at Aaliyah with a triumphant expression. Zinjo and Blitz had a shocked expression on their face. The others had a surprised face as well. Zinjo only exclaimed, My man, a king and now this. Broly just laughed happily as a response. Pretty much everyone now sitting at the table were from the last generation that were old enough to participate in the war, except for Violet, of course. She was only a normal soldier at that time. She was only able to get in contact with this group, as Aaliyah was in the group that rescued her, which resulted in them having contact afterward. They became friends fairly quickly. So, when are you guys leaving? Yanari asked. It was already known that Broly was going and needed strong crew members for the investigation. Obviously, the ones sitting on the table were the first choice, as they all knew each other, which would help with cooperation. It is planned for the next week. Broly didn't hide anything from them and just told them about everything. After the tournament, they all had the experience to be Broly's sparring partner and quickly bonded. Besides, the information wasn't top secret so Broly didn't think much about it. After catching up with each other, Broly was led to the arena. The arena was for group battles. It was much bigger than the gravity chamber. Here they had enough space to let loose especially since the ground was out of the material of the underground base, making it incredible tough. It was time for Broly to test the S-Fighter's strength, and the others wanted to watch. Since Broly promised Zinjo and Blitz to show his legendary Super Scion state, he thought it was the perfect time to do so. Besides from what Broly heard, Zinjo made major improvement the past years, maybe after he tested the other Scion strength it was time for them to have a spar as well. Broly stood dozens of meters away from the four scions. They had already adopted their battle stance. While Broly stood there with crossed arms and looked at them with a smile. The others on the side were intensely focusing on the battlefield. So they wouldn't miss a single thing. Suddenly an oppressing energy burst out of the four scions. Their ki was rising. Making the ground tremble. Suddenly, a golden light seemed to explode where they stood. For Super Science, enveloped with golden key stood at the same spot. Except for the golden spiky hair, the difference in muscle mass between their base form was minuscule. It showed that they all had already mastered their Super Scion state and could unleash their full power in the first level. Violet and Vara on the side had difficulties to breath from the pressure, until Yenari shielded them with her own key. The entire time Broly didn't move a single muscle, now he outstretched his arm and beckoned them to come at him. Without waiting, Aaliyah shot straight at him while Kana jumped upwards. Taro and Aze came at him from the sides. Aaliyah was the first to reach him and sent a straight punch at his face, while Taro aimed a kick at his back and Aze a kick at Broly's legs. Broly reacted by moving forwards and grabbing Aaliyah's wrist, pulling her into Taro's attack while evading Aze's kick by lightly jumping. Broly quickly followed up with a kick straight into Aze's face, 
sending him flying across the arena. Kana suddenly landed in front of him with a charged-up key blast in both her hands. Cute, Broly said just before he was hit by the key blast. The ground shook from the explosion, while the other scions were almost blown away by the shockwave. Without waiting, they all charged up their strongest techniques. They knew Broly wouldn't even be slightly affected by these attacks. They needed something big. The dust slowly settled and slowly a green shimmer could be seen. Broly stood there unharmed, still seemingly in his base form. The only difference was his eyes. He looked at them with his yellow eyes and a grin on his face. His glance gave them a shiver, but they still followed through. On all sides they released their attacks, shooting through the air fast as lightning. In just a moment, their attack reached Broly. H-A-A. With a short shout, a green sphere appeared around him, blocking the attacks. Ha 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 ha. With the laugh, the sphere expanded, pushing the attacks back. Broly raised his arm and shot a casual key blast at Taro without it being hindered by the barrier. He saw this and knew, although it was a casual attack, it was something he couldn't take. He immediately ceased his attack and evaded to the side. Broly shot another three blasts, disrupting the other attacks as well. In a short moment of distraction, Broly had disappeared. They tried to locate him, but they couldn't find him. Ugh! Suddenly A's fell to the ground onto his sides unconscious. Darn it! I can't believe that the gap didn't lessen at all. Taro complained. Aaliyah and Kana looked at each other and came to an understanding as they nodded. While Taro was still searching for Broly, the energy they poured out was unreal. Their strength seemed to become endless. Now even Yanari began to worry that she couldn't shield Vara and Violet from the stray energy. Blitz and Zinjo quickly supported her. The air was being electrified by the high energy coming from the two. Ha 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 ia. Ah. They both shouted out. Their hair became thinner and spikier. The concentration of energy created lightning arcs all over their body and around them. It was like they had summoned lightning, but it was just the side effect of their tremendous power. Even the tough ground started breaking up under the pressure and were flung across the battlefield by the energy they poured out. They seemed to have reached another plateau, as the wave of energy suddenly ceased. Only the lightning and golden aura on their body remained. They found Broly standing over the unconscious body of Taro, who he knocked out while they were powering up. You really need to quicken your transformation. No normal opponent would just wait until you are done. Suddenly, green flame-like key emerged from his feet up until it covered his body, making it impossible for them to see him. The key died down shortly after, revealing a slightly taller and muscular figure with golden hair. His eyes had turned green. Broly didn't seem disturbed the slightest by the strength the girls showed. Rather, he seemed to be excited. Come on! What are you waiting for? He screamed out and as if on cue the girls seemingly teleported away, only to reappear on both Broly's sides. He easily blocked their kicks. They were slightly off balance by the rebound, but quickly readjusted themselves before beginning to rain strikes down on Broly. Broly's smile grew wider by the fight, as he easily dodged or blocked the attacks. Aaliyah found an opening and struck out hard to his face. She could have accepted if Broly had dodged or blocked, but neither happened. Instead, her attack seemed to go right through Broly's face. Kana suddenly cried out in pain, which only became more distance by the second. An afterimage, she realized, two arms appeared on her sides and wrapped around her. The attack was too quick, she couldn't escape it at all. Broly hugged her from the back, but it hadn't any good feelings to it. As he picked her up and squeezed her, she screamed out until she almost undid her transformation. For what felt to her like minutes, she was finally let go. Before she could rejoice her freedom, she was hit in the back, send flying upwards into the ceiling. She slowly lost conscious as she heard Kana scream out on the ground. Her unconscious body slowly fell to the ground. Broly picked up the beaten Kana by the hand to eye level. Not bad. She smiled bitterly as a response and said, Thanks, you are not so bad yourself. Cough. She fell unconscious right afterward. Broly fed them all a healing capsule and leaned them against the wall. He turned towards the others who were watching. So, 
Who wants to go next? The others only smiled bitterly. Even Zinjo, who was previously proud of his improved strength, shrank away from the challenge after witnessing that one-sided beatdown. Yenari, Blitz and Zinjo shivered at the thought to re-experience the previous countless spars they had with Broly. Scions are crazy, they think this kind of spar is actually normal. Maybe it is only this group. They thought in unison. Violet and Vara, on the other hand, had excited looks on their face. Well, Vara looked angrily at Broly while tending Taro. Only Violet seemed to be the only one that was undisturbed with this spar. Broly? I heard that your transformation is a bit different from the others. But it doesn't look any different. Violet asked. HM? Ah yes, that's what I wanted to show you. Broly slapped his forehead and then distanced himself a bit before a terrifying energy poured outside. Zinjo reacted quickly, he transformed to a figure two meters tall and with only two arms. A red aura emerged, before solidifying into a red key sphere guarding them. The others were in shock as they looked at the 2.8M monster that leaked a horrifying aura and key. He was packed with steel like muscles and his green hair pointed into the sky. He pridefully looked at them with his green eyes until his energy retracted inside. Broly grinned at them, but for them, it only looked like a beast grinning at their imminent demise. It was not because Broly wasn't able to control his emotions that influenced his expressions, but it was the natural vibe he gave off and because he wanted to mess with them. Unexpectedly, Violet was the first to talk again. Broly, do you always grow this big when transforming? She asked with gleaming eyes. Seeing her idol in his most powerful state was just too exciting for her. Her gaze was a bit off-putting for Broly. Eh, yes I do. He slowly reverted to towards his base form. How many transformations do you have? It seemed like it was two, the golden-haired one and your legendary state, but what was that when Kana attacked you? It didn't seem like another transformation, but your eyes changed and your strength increased too. HM? Oh that, I will explain when the others wake up again. Another question, when you get bigger, do only your muscles grow or is it an overall package? Do your organs grow too? Because only the muscles grew when Taro showed me this inferior grade. He said that he forces an increase in power output on top of the initial transformation. So, he inflates his muscles by sending key through the body which results in him becoming slower but dash, Okay, okay. Calm down for a second, alright? I am not sprinting away, when you don't ask me five questions at once. Violet was stunned for a second, but quickly came back to her senses. She blushed in embracement. She was just too excited, now that she could talk and learn more about him and his strength. The so-called living legend. Sorry, I got too excited, but you are a living legend which only appears every 1000 years. In the future, I am sure, you will spread your name across the universe. Ah, I have to correct you on that one. The legend only says about the legendary Super Scion appearing 1000 years ago, not appearing every 1000 years. It is not like we keep record of every legendary Super Scion in history. We only know for sure that 1000 years ago one had appeared, after he said that the other Scions slowly woke up. They rested for a few minutes before Broly continued to answer Violet's answer. About my eyes, the other Scions began to listen attentively as well, as they heard him mention his eyes. They have noticed that it seems to be another form of power that he can use even in his base form. It is simple, actually. The green eyes are just the normal change when a Scion transforms into a Super Scion. Usually it is more a green-bluish color, but my key turns it completely green. My yellow eyes have nothing to do with Super Scion. It is actually me tapping into the Ozuru power without becoming a giant ape. Is that why you told us to keep our tails? So we can tap into that power? Aaliyah asked from the side. No, that has to do with a future transformation, but it is nothing we can achieve now without having thoroughly understanding of our Super Scion power. Tapping into the Ozuru power is not something you can do just by having a tail. I only was able to do so because I had observed my Ozuru transformation through my life force vision. On my journey I trained to force this strength out, without becoming an Ozuru, but instead turning my eyes yellow. Your yellow eyes are hot, Kana suddenly threw in. 
They looked at her strangely before ignoring her again. Wait, if it hasn't to do with Super Scion, doesn't that mean you could stack it on top? Taro asked. He, yes, actually, I also used my experience from becoming an Ozuru to regain my conscious when I first went legendary on my journey, accidentally resulting in me tapping into my Ozuru power while transforming into a Super Scion. The others, especially the Scions, were shocked by the revelation. Wouldn't that mean that he only showed a tiny fraction of his strength when they fought just a moment ago? Of course, I can't pull out all of my Oozuru power but only part of it. It is better to turn into an Oozuru and then go super, and then compress all this power to turn back into a smaller size, making you much stronger. This is also the way for you to get stronger in the future. That's why I asked you to keep your tails and train to stay conscious after becoming an Ozuru. Ozuru stacked on top of Super Scion. The Scion's eyes were gleaming with anticipation. Yes, but first focus on those powers individually. You need to control both perfectly, making it easier when you want to combine those powers. That is also the reason why I didn't try it yet. I would most certainly lose control and destroy this entire planet. They shivered at the thought of Broly going Super Saiyan Ozuru and losing his shit. It was already horrible when he lost control in his legendary state. What else did you say? Ah, uh, yes. My size. First things first, you said that Taro inflates his muscles, leading to him becoming slower. That is only because he is an idiot. Hey, you said that you become slower if we forcefully increased our energy output. Taro screamed out. Yes, but the fact is that it is still better than the normal Super Scion. There is a tilting point. You can basically push your output to a point where you only gain in strength and speed. If you go beyond that point, your muscles increase too much, making you slower. Basically, there are two grades after the first Super Scion level. One with gaining speed and strength and one with losing speed but higher strength. That is why I told you to unearth the potential in your S-cells, attaining Super Scion full power, as it has no drawbacks, you would only gain with it. But why is it that you grow taller? I know the reason for muscles becoming bigger is by inflating it with key. But what is the reason you grow in overall size? Violet asked after Broly's explanation. The same reason why we transform into a giant ape when we look at the moon. Or why our hair turns golden as a super scion. My legendary state is not a super scion form like the others. It is a different mutation. So... My increase in size is just the natural state my body adapts to if I go legendary. So, no other scion can achieve that transformation. Aaliyah confirmed. Yes, it is like asking Zinjo to transform into an Ozuru. Any more questions? No, I think that is it for now. Violet said happily. For now. Broly, can we spar? And with spar I mean not being completely beaten up. Violet suddenly asked. Yeah, sure. I go easy on you. Thanks a lot. Wait, wait. You going easy is an option? Zinjo and Blitz abruptly screamed out at the same time. Yes, of course. Not many people are masochistic like you guys. Zinjo. Blitz and Yenari looked at him in disbelief. In fact, I also trained with other race leaders. Do you think I beat them up too? Yes. Okay, I did. But at least we all had a good time. Right? No, we never asked to be thrashed. Well, you never complained either. Besides, you grew tremendously after we sparred. Spar my butt. You just burst into our training rooms. Saying, surprise, mother schmucker, and beat us up. Zinjo screamed while pointing at Broly. Besides, we didn't grow stronger because of the spars, but because we put extra effort into our training. So we wouldn't die one day by your hands in one of your spars. Aha! So, you did grow stronger because I sparred with you. Unbelievable. Anyway. Violet, let's spar. All right, she said. Fired up and undisturbed by the accusations, the others threw at Broly. Unfortunately for her, she would soon find out that they weren't accusing but stating facts. Ow, ow, ow. Violet whined as she rubbed her bruised arm. Broly, I thought you said you would be going easy. She whimpered. I did. He did. Broly and the others said in unison. All right, enough for today. Let's go eat again and then rest for the day. We can spar again the same time tomorrow. Hell no. Zinjo screamed out. Dude, 
A simple no is enough. It is not like I would beat you up ten times worse if you don't show up tomorrow. Broly said with an evil grin. Gulp. On the other hand, I need some exercise after the months in space. Good boy. After eating, they went to the open-air hot spring together. Broly entered the hot water and, unlike before, he thought the temperature was too low. On his journey, he usually bathed in water near lava after all. They relaxed and had some casual talk for a few hours until they started leaving. Broly asked them again to spar him the next day. Broly wanted more people to gang up on him, otherwise the fight would become boring for him. Broly was the last to leave. He put his clothes on and went to his room to see Kana leaning against the wall next to his door. Hey, what are you doing here? Were you waiting for me? Kana only then came out of daze and looked at him before smiling seductively. She came closer and hugged him before whispering to him. I just wanted to ask if you could have another spar with me. Broly was stunned for a moment before grinning. He opened his door and felt a push from behind. Kana pushed him inside in hurriedly until they arrived at the bed. A slash N. NSFW scene starts here. The end of the scene has been marked as well if you want to skip it. You have been warned. He turned around and saw her face becoming red. He picked her up and threw her onto the bed before climbing into the bed as well. He put his knee between her legs as he leaned over her. Now she seemed to be rather apprehensive as if her usual confidence was just a facade. She didn't look straight at him but to the side, seemingly looking for something for her to focus. She felt Broly's hand touching her chin as her face was pulled to the front. He leaned in and gave her a deep kiss. Until morning, only moans and grunts could be heard out of their rooms. Panting heavily, Kana rested her head against his chest. Her hair stuck on her face because of her sweat. Broly was satisfied as he thought about the night he had. He petted her head before standing up. Leaving already? Kana said weakly. Yes, got a train. Kana smiled at the response. I'm coming as well after I can move again. A slash N. NSFW end. He left the room that morning and headed towards his training room. With his battle armor equipped, he trained under 1300 G gravity which was his current limit with his base form. From what he knew from the series, Vegeta trained up to a gravity of 500G till the Busaga. But this didn't mean Broly was merely 2.6 times stronger than Vegeta at that time. The higher the gravity, the more energy one needed to counteract it, which could be seen by the fact that Vegeta in the Busaga was certainly not only 5 times stronger than Goku pre Namek, who trained under 100G. Besides, if he pushed himself further, he could easily max out the gravity, but he chose against it. He wanted to train for the whole day and not just for a few hours, he not only needed strength but the endurance to go with it. Besides, next week would be his trip to the rift, and he wanted to relax beforehand. He would have enough time if he traveled towards Namek in the future to train his body. He had already asked the best scientists in the city to integrate the best gravity chamber they could come up with into his personal spaceship. He already looked forward to the result. He hadn't trained his body for a long time and noticed his pace was exceedingly faster than after he had run out of excess life force. His body has already grown up by a lot, making it easier for his body to grow even stronger. Before he had prematurely tortured his underdeveloped muscles but fortunately, he had life force and mass, keeping his body healthy and increasing his progress. He first thought that he might have been healthy even without the life force as the scion physique would let him grow through injuries, but this only included mayor injuries, the best life-threatening ones, to stimulate growth. The accumulated inner injuries were not fixed by this. It may be not as determining as for humans, but it would in the end slow him down in the future. To prevent this, he avoided any injuries in his cells. After the journey, this was even less of a concern for him. He didn't have to worry about any inner injuries as his use of life force control reached new heights, making it easier for him to detect and fix any problems some cells might have. After some time, a bell rang out, indicating someone at the door. He turned off the gravity and let the people in. Of course, they were his sparring partners he would train with today. After he had beaten them up and Blitz and Yenari were constantly complaining, he thought he had abused them enough. They went to eat again and went to the open-air hot spring. As the day before, 
He left last and as he reached his room, he saw Kana leaning against the wall again. This time she didn't even bother to wear any clothes but came directly in her bathrobes. She was gripping her robe tightly until she saw Broly coming. She looked at him with a red face and steamy eyes, pleading to him. He opened the room, and another night was spent without rest. This routine repeated itself for a whole week until a morning when Broly got information about his crew and about the mission in general. He looked through the documents, and he was only responsible for protecting them from the distorted space inside the rift, as the others shoot out some devices which would run some tests and then go out again. In short, bring them in and out. He looked at the nude Kana who was sleeping on his bed and threw a towel at her, waking her up. Get ready. In a few hours we are going up. Kana pulled the towel off her face and dizzily sat up. Broly watched her amused. He stood up and was about to go outside before he saw her fall back into bed and dozing off again. Broly went to the bed, climbed on top of Kana and whispered into her ear. How about another round? She opened her eyes, staring at his mischievously smile. Come on, we gotta go dash as Broly stood up. He felt Kana wrapping her arms around his neck. He stood there with her hanging off his neck. She used her legs to wrap around his waist and sealed off his lips with hers before he could say anything. She stopped her kiss and gazing affectionately in his eyes. I love you. Broly was stunned at the sudden exclamation. Although they had shabbowinked all week long, it was only about the pleasure. It was not like he didn't like her, but... I dash Kana saw his hesitantly reaction and could only smile bitterly. She aggressively kissed him while forcing her tongue in. A few minutes passed with them making out before they stopped, and she whispered into his ear. I am Scion woman, you know we are stubborn. She lightly bit his lip. I will just make you love me. She jumped off him and slowly walked to the bathroom while exaggerating, swaying her naked butt. She leaned against the open bathroom door, presenting her nude body in full glory, giving him a wink before closing the door. Broly heard the water running from the shower. He was tempted to follow her, but he knew that hours would pass until he would calm down again. He waited until she came out again all clothed up in her tight body armor and with a slight smile on her face. He walked up to her and put his hands on her butt, kneading her until he was satisfied. You are making good progress, he said, staring into her eyes before taking her by the hand leading her out of the room. Kana was uncontrollably blushing and had a big smile on her face. Broly went to the meeting with Kana in tow. He greeted some other leaders and talked about the mission with the city lord. The rest of the important crew members had quickly gathered and were listening to the details. After a few hours, the start would be announced and they would be on their way. Taro and A's were asked by Broly to stay on the ground. They were tasked to keep an eye on any ships that took off after them or any other objects following them. Aaliyah, though, was a crew member. She was quite excited to see this rift but was now pouting the whole time. Violet, who was assigned as the pilot, noticed her behavior. Hey, what are you pouting about? It will be fun. I will show off my superb flying skills. With me as the pilot, there will be no problems. She confidently proclaimed while beating her chest. I know. You are the most anxious to get to the front line. So much that you learn to fly a spaceship, but I am not worried about the flight. It is about them. She pointed at a couple with her eyes. The woman was sitting on the guy's lap while pecking his lips from time to time, while he caressed her butt. They were totally disregarding the public as they made out. This couple, of course, was Broly and Kana. Feeling a glaring stare from somewhere, Kana turned her head. Aaliyah was staring daggers at them. Kana looked at her while she guided her hand to Broly's crotch, not hiding her movements at all. Aaliyah's mind clicked. For the last week, Kana was always leaving last from the hot spring, avoiding going back to their rooms together. She thought it was weird but didn't think much about it. She was too occupied in exploring her body with her newfound hobby, but now it made sense. Kana had already made successful advances on Broly while advising her to know her body more. Before she could continue her thoughts, they were interrupted with the announcement of the start of the mission. The crew members boarded the ships. While boarding, Aaliyah couldn't take it anymore and went up to them. 
I am quickly borrowing her for a while, she said with an icy smile before pulling Kana away. She led her towards a storage room inside. Not bad, Kana. I thought we were friends. Aaliyah cried out after closing the door. Kana shrunk back. What are you talking about? Kana asked as she saw Aaliyah with watery eyes. You successfully seduced him? Are you proud? Making me occupied with masturbation while you went off into the sunlight with him. Is that what you wanted? Kana was stunned for a moment before smiling bitterly. Sigh. I never believed for a second that I could have Broly all for myself, not after seeing you both in the training room. And I never wanted you out of the way so I could steal him from you. I just wanted you to be prepared, that's why I gave you all these, you know, the toys. Sigh. I am sorry for teasing you earlier. I, you are my best friend and I never wanted to hurt you. So, you never shabboinked with Broly? Aaliyah wiped her tears away. Well, this, cough. I somehow ended up at his door and I, it is not like I planned to meet him when he was alone so I could give my first to him or anything but dash dot. So you did. Kana shouted, stomping her feet, making the whole ship tremble. Kana clapped her hands together and bowed down. I am sorry, it was just that after training with him again. My emotions were in a tumult and I didn't think it through. She bowed down, waiting for her response. Humph. <laughs> You have to promise me that you won't shaboink him until I have. Understood. Aaliyah shouted angrily. I dash. Understood? Yes, I promise. Kana slowly opened one of her eyes. She saw Aaliyah with a bright smile and even her watery eyes returned to normal as if the scene before was just an illusion. All right, now that you promised, let's go back. We have a mission to complete. She turned around to leave until Kana called out. Wait. You are really not angry anymore? HM? I don't mind you sleeping with him. I was just afraid that you got too far ahead of me. Besides, you are later going to tell me everything about your nights with him. I want to prepare myself mentally to what's to come. Hee <laughs> hee, Aaliyah said while biting her lip, imagining something. All right, we are going. Kana was intimidated by her calm and commanding voice that she immediately agreed to everything she said. After a short while, Broly saw Aaliyah and Kana come back. He stood in the cockpit with Violet, waiting for the ship to take off. Are you guys alright? Yes, we just made something clear. Ha ha ha. Isn't it exciting that we are flying into a rift? Aaliyah jumped forward, grasping Broly's hand, while her eyes were glistening. Ahem. Sure. Broly looked at her. She looks at me like I am food. She is even drooling, M? Hee hee. Yes, to explore this kind of thing. Isn't that every man's dream? Broly said as he wrapped one arm around Aaliyah and one around Kana, pulling them closer, making them both blush. Violet rolled her eyes at the display. Violet focused on the instructions and saw that everyone is on board, ready for takeoff. She spoke through a microphone about their imminent departure. Shortly afterward, the ship took off, shooting into the sky towards their destination in space. A few minutes later, they arrived and readied themselves for entry. They slowly closed in. Their ship seemed to warp into a swirl as they got closer before vanishing. The crew looked outside and saw a space with colorful nebula. The ship was trembling since they entered. With special suits, a few soldiers went outside and shielded the ship with their key. Broly, Aaliyah, and Kana were outside as well. The scientists on the other hand were tipping away on their panels, and soon a few drone-like devices flew out of the ship and formed a hexagon above the ship. Before, laser-like beams connected the spaceship and the drones, while the drones were connected to each other. Broly looked up and observed for any disturbance, but nothing seemed to happen even after an hour. Suddenly a thick nebula approached them from afar. It was still far away and wouldn't reach them before they were done. As a precaution, Broly flew forward and approached the nebula for a bit. His key flared up and protected the whole ship from ahead. He looked at the distant nebula. He suddenly had a bad premonition. He couldn't help but turn on his life force vision. His forehead started sweating as he stared wide-eyed at the massive amount of life force hidden inside the nebula. He wanted to retreat, but the life force suddenly vanished. He stood there with his mouth wide open not sure to think about what he saw. The nebula slowly thinned again, 
blending in with the rest of the space. For the rest of the mission, Broly was on full alert and even turned into his legendary state. After another hour, they were done. He returned to the ship and they all moved out of the rift. The ship only sustained minor damage from the distorted space but nothing out of their expectation. Kana went up to Broly who furrowed his eyebrows. Hey, are you alright? What are you thinking about? Sigh. Nothing, let's go outside. Broly answered with a slight smile on his face. The crew went outside, and the mood was good. According to the scientists, the first look at the data seems quite promising. Maybe they would only make some small adjustments to the previous prototype, and they could stabilize the rift. After the gathering that told the leaders that they would need around a week to create the first devices, which are based on their prototypes, those should be able to stabilize space inside. The higher-ups were of course delighted and started celebrating. There was much alcohol and food involved. Broly was occupied with devouring the buffet with Aaliyah and Kana. Many leaders wanted to introduce their race's female geniuses to Broly, but were quickly scared away by the combined harsh looks from Aaliyah and Kana. Broly obviously noticed their actions and was quite pleased by having two beauties guarding him. He already saw them as his, so seeing their affection made him feel pretty good. After a while, Kana said that she wanted to sleep at her place today, so he shouldn't wait for her. Broly was a bit confused by the sudden change. For the last week, they had shared a bed with each other, which made her actions a bit weird for Broly, but he didn't think much about it. Maybe she needed some rest, he thought. After the party almost died out, Broly and Aaliyah left for their rooms. Aaliyah was drunk. On their way to her room, she was constantly touching Broly, saying that she wanted to sleep with him. After the time spent with Kana, he wasn't as hasty to get into her pants. So instead of accepting her advances, he pushed her inside her room and tucked her in. She quickly dozed off and Broly left. He didn't want to take advantage of someone who was drugged and barely able to stay conscious. Although he did wake up Kana once with a surprise, he entered his room and undressed himself, ready to go to bed. What are you doing in my closet? Broly suddenly said out loud. After saying that, he heard something fall inside. He opened his closet and saw Kana covered in his clothes. What are you doing there? Ah, I forgot my pajamas. I was just looking for it in here. Didn't think you would be back already. Broly rolled his eyebrows. That's why you completely entered the closet and closed the door behind you, which gives you almost no space to bend down. Yeah, right. He picked her up and put her on his shoulders. He closed the door and took her to bed. He laid down beside her and started sleeping. She looked at him and snuggled up on him. With a smile on her face, she fell asleep. Couple of days passed. Broly as always was training. He and Kana weren't intimate with each other, and Broly quickly found out why. These days, Aaliyah invited all the S-Fighters to drink and would try to seduce Broly. He found out that as soon as Aaliyah made some kind of advances, Kana and the others would leave the two. Kana being mischievous, always hid inside the room but always with a perfect view at the bed. After the third day, he told Aaliyah to meet him at his room later at noon. She hesitated for a moment, but it was still relatively bright outside, as the sun would only set soon, which was enough to give her courage to walk in. She saw Broly sitting on a chair, placing his chin on his hands. As soon as she walked in, she wanted to say something, but was distracted with the bed on the side. She blushed before asking, M. Broly WH why did you wanted me to come here? Broly appeared in front of her and sealed her lips with his and embraced her. You don't have to be so anxious. Her face became even redder. She only nodded slightly without looking at him directly. Broly held her face in his hands, forcing her to look at him. I am not even sure why you feel the need to sleep with me. You don't have to force yourself. I know that you used alcohol to give yourself courage to approach me, but if something troubles you, just say it. She blanked out for a second. She gritted her teeth, seemingly fighting with the decision to tell him or not. After a few minutes of them standing there while hugging, she started talking. I heard about your nights from Kana. She stopped, struggling to continue. She told me everything in great detail, and you know I, I don't think I can handle you, Broly seems to slowly get what she was getting at. She told me that you lose yourself. 
I thought if you were a bit more drunk, you would easier fall asleep, and I would be number... Ha 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 ha. Broly started laughing, which surprised her, making her pout that he didn't take it as serious as her. So sorry. You shouldn't think that I would treat you the same as Kana. She is a masochist after all and likes it rougher. Of course, I would hold back with you. That's not what she told me. She said that she would like it either way. Eh? Wait, what? Broly was surprised. He was pretty sure that he figured Kana out. She said that no matter how she approaches you, you always go wild and do it for hours until she loses herself in pleasure and forgets about the time. Oh, I think I have to talk with her later. Okay, how about this? I give you full reign and I won't do anything. Why, 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 you mean I, I should lick, do it myself? Aaliyah stuttered as her head started glowing brightly red. Well, it will make it easier for you to adapt when you control the pace, won't it? Yes, but I never... Before she could say anything, he gave her a deep kiss and caressed her behind. She again collapsed next to him while panting. He crawled behind her and embraced her. She felt his wide arms around her and dozed off shortly after. Broly saw that Kana opened the closet. She entered midway, with her clothes being all messy. She climbed into the bed and snuggled up at Broly's back. Next time I want all three of us to spar, to Kana whispered. Getting it off while only able to watch made her frustrated. Broly laid on his back, pulling Kana and Aaliyah towards his chest. He looked at Kana before talking. Of course, he gave her a deep kiss. She fiercely blushed and rested her head on his chest. Hearing his heart beat, she fell asleep. Broly slowly woke up. He looked down on the two beauties that were sleeping on his chest. They even had their legs curled around his, which made him feel blissful. He saw his tablet blinking. He carefully wriggled his way out and picked it up. It was about the devices that would stabilize the space inside the rift. The previous crew was to be gathered and go for a test run with it. He turned around and wanted to wake the two girls up, as they were part of the crew. He saw that now he was out of bed. They had snuggled up and embraced each other. Hey, you two monkeys get up. He went up to them and squeezed their tails, slightly pulling them. NHMM. A. They started moaning. Broly looked at the tails in his hand and started thinking about something he hadn't considered yet. A grin appeared on his face. Morning, Broly. Kana said while rubbing her eyes. Why are you suddenly so small and what is this elastic dash, Haya? Kana, stop it. Aaliyah screamed as she escaped Kana's gropes while pulling the sheets to cover herself. She started pointing at the dumbfounded Kana. What are you doing here? Where is Broly? Cough. Here. Broly said awkwardly. Sorry. But there is no way in hell. I would sleep in the closet. Why are you looking at me like that? Kana said as Aaliyah stared angrily and mostly embarrassed at her. Kana shrugged and started licking the air. Before saying. You can take a punch to the face without flinching but are squirming when I lick you for a bit. Aaliyah you have outdone yourself. And you only started having interest in shabowinking since only a bit more than a week. Kana said teasingly. Aaliyah couldn't take it anymore and covered herself with the sheets. You know, I thought that after you declared that you would shaboink Broly, you wouldn't take several days. You know how frustrating it got? Just stop. I get it. Aaliyah shouted and quickly ran to the bathroom while picking her battle armor up. Why are you even embarrassed in the first place? We will eventually spend our time together. Kana shouted after her. Broly shook his head. Stop teasing her and get up and start dressing. The stabilizers are ready. You are always so nice to her. But you only order me around. Kana pouted as she stared at him. Yeah, I have to be clear, otherwise you wouldn't listen. That's not true. I am very obedient. She shook her fist. Yeah, and what was that when we fought the seas? I remember clear dash. Stop it. I get it. Like Aaliyah. She ran into the bathroom with her clothes. Hey, what are you doing here? I am getting dressed, obviously. That's not what I mean. Can't you wait? Okay. Then I will get dressed outside with Broly. On the other hand, stay here. Click it is time for revenge. She locked the door and only screams and moans resounded through the door as she viciously attacked Kana. 
Broly looked down at himself and quietly dressed himself while listening to the birds chirping. They quickly arrived at the meeting and like the first time they were given some details and were prepared for the takeoff. Broly stood inside the cockpit with Violet who was operating the spaceship and waited for the go sign. After a while they took off with the 200 strong crew and shortly after were slowly entering the rift. Without hitch they went inside and were able to release the stabilizers. Hundreds of drone-like devices were released and built a hexagon after hexagon deep into the rift. Broly and the others were already on the lookout for any disturbances, they were currently blasting their key to lessen the burden on the drones. The drones connected to each other, forming a hexagon-shaped tube extending into the rift. It looked like the tube tore through the nebula, as only normal space with stars shone back at them inside the tube. The whole crew were on the verge of jubilation, but this was just the start. After successfully building the pathway, they needed to test the waters. They send a small space pod capable of an all-surround video transfer to look at the situation ahead. The pod slowly flew along the tube, filming everything on its way. The crew was silent as they waited anxiously about the result. The pod flew further, and slowly they saw how the pod was beginning to distort before disappearing altogether. The connection was terminated, but they all released a sigh of relief. They looked over the sent footage and data to analyze if it was safe. After determining that there were no problems, they began the final test to see if they could get out. Broly started flying into space along the tube where the pod flew at. As he traveled, he powered up directly into his legendary state and his eyes turned yellow. He was currently in his strongest form. Although he directed all his energy and focus to the front, the crew behind him couldn't even breath as they looked at the person who released a tremendous amount of key. Kana and Aaliyah powered up into Super Scion 2 and shielded the crew from the residue key. But their main focus was still on Broly. If they saw something out of the norm, they would be the ones to pull him back or rather assist him. After all, after Broly they were the strongest people on this planet. Broly faintly felt the connection to his key, he sent a head being lost, but he knew that had to be because it entered another space out of his reach. He only had to traverse it and bring back the pod. They saw Broly's body distorting and finally vanish. This was all expected. Now he only needed to return, and the mission would be a full success. Broly's vision abruptly changed, not different to when he entered or exited on the other side. He knew that he had arrived in the normal universe. He looked at his vital data on his suit and saw that everything was normal. He looked around and saw the pod flying further into space. Before he flew to it, he released a small little ball that would mark his way back. He then quickly arrived at the pod and stopped it. He went inside and turned it on manual. As soon as he turned his pod around, he was astonished by the scene. A gigantic red planet broken into thousands of pieces suspended in space and a distant dim star far away in the background. That is how the universe sees us. A destroyed planet void of life. Broly smiled bitterly, but it was to be expected. That was probably the reason why no other scions were mentioned in the series. This or because they all died in the rifts without that science guidance. He looked at the ball and steered towards it. Without picking it up, he flew past it. His pod distorted and he was back in the nebula rift. He saw Aaliyah's and Kana's anxious faces as they waited for his return. He felt warm inside as he carefully flew towards them. The other crew members were already cheering at his return and the successful mission. He exited the pod and was immediately greeted with two super scions crashing into him, hugging him tightly. They had bright smiles on their faces. He patted their backs for a bit. They then stored away the pod and flew out of the rift to deliver the good news. On the ground as soon as they stepped outside, they were screaming and cheering, immediately letting everyone know of the success. They all hugged each other and celebrated. But Broly knew this wasn't the end for him. He still needed to clear things up with the other leaders. He saw the city lord nod at him and then disappear with the other leaders. He made Aaliyah and Kana know that he would leave shortly, and they should celebrate without him. They were confused but knew that it had to be something important, considering the serious tone of his voice. He quickly went towards the secret meeting of the leaders and started discussing, after Broly described what he saw and analyzed the data of the pod. 
They were arguing about what they were going to do now that they could return to the normal universe. Some wanted to leave for their home area and look if there were some survivors on nearby planets. Others wanted to build a joint headquarters on a new planet. But in one point they were all on the same page they wanted to leave. Not just most but all. After careful thoughts and after all these years of searching a traversable rift, it showed them that even though it could be a good defense mechanism, it would inevitably be a cage. Who would guarantee that enemies wouldn't throw a bomb inside the rift, completely throwing the rift into disarray and cutting them off once again from the universe? Now it was time for them to decide their future actions. It was never addressed in the series but with power that exceeded natural growth, the cells are strengthened and to a degree extended one's lifespan. Additional with his life force he would have a guaranteed long life. He had status, women, power and a long life. Everything he could only dream of in his past life. To be honest, there wasn't any reason why he should leave this planet. With the distortion of space and time around the planet, it would be almost impossible to find them. Indeed, he could live the secure life he always wanted. But was that what Broly wanted now? No. As a child, seeing the characters in his favorite show made him want to be as strong as they were. With the gods coming into play later, even as an adult, he dreamed about becoming as strong as Kakarot and the others. But now, now he became Broly, the legendary Super Scion. A Scion that, by mere existing, could rival the future strongest people in this and the other universes. He didn't just want power, he now craved more. To see the peak and to surpass it. He wanted his name to resound through the ages. An ever-living legend. As if he could hide himself on this closed-off planet so he could live comfortably. That wasn't his goal anymore. He wanted to be the most powerful living being. To do so, it wasn't enough to be strong. He needed to experience the universes, challenge experts with all kinds of abilities and defeat them all. Kakarot, Vegeta, Hit, Jiren, the gods of destruction, the angels and even Zeno. He will defeat every single last of them and surpass them all. Of course, it would be difficult to gain the attention of these powerful entities, as it would be nearly impossible for him to reach the other universes without the help of Wiss. An option would be to let everyone in the universe know of me, so my name would even resound in distant places. Someone unrivaled in the universe. Wouldn't Beerus and Wiss come to me on their own violation? From there, it would be easy to find new challenges. Broly could reach the other universes and challenge their strongest. Of course, I need to treat this carefully, since Beerus could just erase me in an emotional outburst. I am not even close to them in power now, but later, he... That wasn't just a fantasy of him. This became his plan. I will establish a kingdom and extend my influence across the universe. I will bring order to this universe. And you are invited to join my quest. The others were shocked by his sudden exclamation. He didn't propose a joint alliance but wanted to rule over them. And extend his influence across the universe. Wouldn't that mean he wanted to rule it? Some wanted to directly deny this preposterous claim but it was stuck in their throat. They already saw a glimpse of his power. His strength was unbelievable, and he was growing with no end in sight. What if he actually manages to become the ruler of this universe? Wouldn't this early entry mean they would have a solid position in this newly established kingdom? These thoughts ran through their mind. Even if the races were at their peak, they wouldn't be able to do anything to him. If he can't be stopped, why not join him? Many were still hesitant, as they wanted to keep their position as their absolute ruler, but this would extend their rule to a degree which they couldn't even dream of achieving. They all were leaders that had a degree of foresight, otherwise their races would have already crumbled under the pressure of the seas. This is not something done overnight. I will need a planet as my headquarters and operate from there. After I found it, I will let you know. Think about it until then. Broly stood up and left them behind. To be honest, they weren't much power-wise, but it was about quantity if he wanted to operate on a universal level. With the few hundred scions, he couldn't possibly think about establishing his kingdom and the other races would be excellent to fill in the gap, at least in the beginning. The reason he wanted to establish a kingdom wasn't just to spread his name, it was about the fact that he wouldn't be able to do everything himself. He needed minions to do trivial and time-consuming jobs like acquiring the Origin Stones. The distance between them was too great and would take him years if he flew with a spaceship, 
Even with instant transmission he needed key to lock onto. Maybe he could find another teleportation method that just needs coordinates, but who could guarantee that he could find it or someone who does know and is willing to teach? He wouldn't waste his time searching, and even if he learned some teleportation method that doesn't have that kind of limitations, subordinates would be still useful in many other ways. First things first. He wanted to take a visit to Earth for the Dragon Balls. He didn't know where New Namek was, the information Jain saved were from ages ago, and he would need an estimated five years to get to Earth. It would be year 763, until then Frisia would be already dead. With Dend taking over the position as Kami, the Dragon Balls wouldn't lose out to the ones the Namekians created. Besides, the hyperbolic time chamber is too attractive on its own. In conclusion, the current priority is to get to Earth and get those wishes. Broly couldn't help but grin as he thought about his future. He went to the celebration and ate his belly full. Now it was time to relax. There would be plenty of time to think about everything, once he flew through space. The next morning, Broly woke up early. He saw Kana naked, laying on his chest. Aaliyah was sleeping in her room. She was still embarrassed of what happened the morning before. Broly already thought about it. She would be more prone to sleep here if she was exhausted, he... I need to sleep with her every day now, so she can get used to waking up with Kana and me. Broly grinned wistfully. He quietly snuck out of bed and headed to the city lord's library. Sir Broly. The librarian bowed respectfully as he welcomed Broly. Give me everything. Excuse me, sir? I want every technique in this library as a digital copy. Ahem. Sir. I, I don't think I can authorize that. The librarian was starting to sweat. He couldn't afford the man in front of him, but he can't just hand out every technique. Those were only accessible with credit points. Fine, call the city lord, Broly said, annoyed. Even though he could understand the librarian's point. He could take it by force, but this would shine bad light on him, making the other leaders more unlikely to comply later if they think of him as a tyrant. After a short moment, the city lord arrived at the entrance. I, I, I. My disciple wants to rob me, the city lord said with a fake concerned expression. He, it will be a long time in the spaceship. Can't only train my body without improving anything else. Now can I? Indeed, the more knowledge you gain, the stronger you become. The reason why I am troubled is that it would have been my farewell gift. Sigh. Now I have to think of something else. Haha. <laughs> Don't worry. I will just see it as a prematurely given gift. The city lord grinned and spoke to the librarian. All right. Give him what he wants and Broly. I have a request for you. Oh? I won't promise anything. If it is within my capabilities, I will do it. Thank you. It shouldn't be too difficult for you. I want you to find my niece. Find your niece? You know the universe is big. It would be difficult to find a person out there. Broly said with an awkward smile. He wanted to help, after all the city lord has helped him greatly, since he was small. But to find someone in the universe, that's difficult, nearly impossible. Even if it is his master, he couldn't waste his time for a near impossible request. You don't have to worry about that. I know where she is being imprisoned, but with my strength it would be impossible to get her out. Well, that makes it easy. I am listening. Broly inwardly released a sigh of relief. It wouldn't leave a good taste in his mouth if he had to deny his request. But if it was strength, he was confident that he would be able to survive almost everywhere in the universe. Rather, it would be even better if it could threaten him. Yes, it happened a long time ago. She and her friends were powerful and became arrogant, leading to them becoming pirates. In the end, they were individually locked inside a distant planet. I will send you the data later. They are locked in there for centuries already, so it doesn't matter if you take your time. And if it is possible, it would be good if you could leave her friends alive, since there aren't many of my kind left. Of course, if you have to, just kill them. I only care about my niece. Hmm. No problem. What is her name and how does she look like? Broly had premonition of who it could be. In the end of it, he only knew of one female Hera survivor. Her name was Zangya. Of course, it is her, Broly thought. She has long, curly orange hair and, like all of us, bluish skin and eyes. 
She is 165 centimeters tall. The city lord even had a picture ready to show. Who sealed her away? Broly faked ignorance. He didn't really care that the Kais sealed her away. But it would be weird if he didn't ask about the culprits. The city lord smiled bitterly. Sigh. The four Kais, who govern one quadrant of the universe respectively, combined their powers and sealed her away. They are deities that are said to live in the other world. I know it is a lot to ask from you to go against the gods for a pirate like her, but I dash, don't worry about it. Just give me the location, and before we meet again, I will have rescued her. I will notify you immediately after I did. Thank you, Broly. It means a lot to me. The city lord couldn't help but smile at Broly's promise. By the way, you said that they were sealed away, but how can I unseal them? Do you have a technique for that? Or can I use force? You can just use force. They are all sealed inside a planet which keeps them from moving, but the reason I couldn't get them out was because of the barrier around the solar system. It even prevents light from getting out so it was hard to locate. Besides the fact that they reside on their individual planet, I don't know what is beyond that barrier. All right, no problem. Sir, you're our data, the librarian said and gave Broly a small card. He took it on, placed it on his tablet. After a few moments, all techniques were copied and saved on his tablet. Thanks. I will be going now, master. I need to discuss something with the other science, but I expect that we will leave in the next few days. All right, take care. Maybe the time until we will see us again will be even longer than your journey. I hope you will take care of my niece until then. Of course, I will. I just hope you don't miss me too much. Ha ha ha, Broly smiled as he turned around and left while waving his hand. The city lord had a smile on his face before he disappeared from the spot. Broly entered the headquarters and all the scions, be it young or old, men or women, bowed and greeted him as he passed by them. He directly entered the meeting room for the heads of the departments. They were already discussing something. As soon as he entered, they stood up and bowed as they greeted him. Your Majesty, Broly, come. Here we are discussing your coronation. What color do you want the carpet to be? And what about the lightning? Jine was happily babbling on about the coronation, while Daz beside her was smiling wryly. She, Daz and his crew members were probably the only ones that dared to directly call him by name. Although Broly didn't really care whether they called him with a title or not, this of course didn't include people he didn't befriend. Red and more bright. Anyway, I am not here for the coronation. I want to talk about what we are going to do next. Broly made sure that everyone was listening before continuing. To be honest, I want our race to be off this planet soon. There are probably some that still feel threatened by our strength. If they get out before we do, we might end up being trapped here again, and we aren't really adequate for scientific researches. To prevent accidents to happen, we will leave as soon as possible. Call back every scion, and we will take off as soon as they have gathered. Already done, Broly. I called everyone back since the results from the mission came in. I thought you might want to leave quickly, Daz reported. Good. What about the spaceship? Is it able to take us all for long distances? Broly looked at Krez, who was newly appointed as the head of the Department of Trade and was responsible for gathering supplies and build a ship for them to leave on. Broly was only informed after he got back from his journey that they already had plans to send out Scions en masse before they even began to search for a rift. Yes, the spaceship is already done. We have more than enough place for everyone around a thousand rooms and gravity chambers. We are only around 434, so there is no problems considering space. Our supplies we have gathered so far is also enough for a few years long journey. Considering the amount we eat, we will most likely have to replenish once on the way. All right, do we already have a planet from our past data that we could immigrate to in mind? Yes, we have searched after a planet with preferable high gravity and capable of harboring life, but with no civilization. There are around 124 planets we could live on in the Milky Way galaxy. Considering your condition that it needs to be close to planet Earth, there is only one planet we could stay on. The scion responsible for searching a planet pressed on the panel and a picture popped open, revealing a huge green, bluish planet. The data on the side revealed that it was around five times the gravity of planet Vegeta. 
It was a beautiful planet with perfect conditions. The problem was that a scan in the past revealed that there are powerful creatures dwelling on it, making everyone apprehensive from invading it. Of course, the Scions now were on a whole new level. They weren't afraid of the threat this planet posed. Jain looked at Broly and whispered to him, You said that it should be close to Earth? Why? Don't you want to see your son? Broly grinned at her. He wasn't going to tell her that he wanted to use the Dragon Balls, as he shouldn't have any knowledge about them. Jain understandably took it as Broly's consideration of her. Now, before we talk about the coronation, I have to tell you that I am not going to leave on the same ship as you. I already have a personal ship and will steer towards another planet. I have business on. I will arrive at our new planet a few months later. Until I have arrived, I count on you to establish yourselves on there. If you face major problems, send a distress signal to me. I will arrive as soon as I can. Thereafter, they were organizing the coronation until a few hours later. It was settled that tomorrow morning, Broly would be crowned, and he would leave immediately afterward on his personal ship. The Scions would be leaving shortly after as well. In the evening, Broly sparred with Zinjo, Blitz and Yanari and hinted on his soon departure. He also had some words with Vara and Violet before he went towards his own training room. The sign was green so he just entered. He saw that Aaliyah, Kana, Taro and Aze were sparring with each other. His room already became the place where they would gather, since Broly would never reject a spar and they always wanted to fight. If they didn't find him, they would just spar with each other. Yo, mind if I join? Surprised by the sudden voice, they turned towards him. Hey, Broly, finally done with your errands? Kana said cheekily. Yes, and it seems I have to leave for a few years tomorrow. Broly grinned. Kana furrowed her eyebrows. Now that's a mean joke. Not a joke. In fact, you will leave tomorrow as well. You and every other Scion are going to migrate to another planet, while I need to leave for another planet. They were stunned. They could tell that he was serious. Aze was the first to speak again. Understood. But don't forget that you would appoint me an elite group. Aze had asked him that, after he heard that Broly would become king, he wanted to establish an unrivaled elite crew that would take on the most difficult missions. Of course, Broly agreed that he would give him the best seedlings to train. The next time you will see me, I will be beyond your reach. Ha 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 ha, Taro boasted shamelessly. They both knew that their race needed a few strong people to account for the unexpected. As super science, this task would fall into their hands. It would hit Aaliyah and Kana harder if they had to leave. So the two immediately jumped forward to accompany the other Scions. Aaliyah and Kana smiled gratefully at them, before turning to Broly. You are not leaving without us, they said in unison. Broly smiled happily. He hoped they wanted to accompany him on his travel. Broly went ahead and embraced the two. He gave them both a passionate deep kiss. Taro and Aze awkwardly looked at each other before they left the three on their own. Broly squatted down and picked both of them up with one arm each and sprinted towards his room. After seconds, they arrived. Broly quickly locked the door and threw the two on the bed. The next morning, as always, Kana tried to tease Aaliyah but after the night it seemed like she grew another layer of skin. They quickly cleaned up and readied themselves for the coronation. The two girls already left to attend it like the rest of the Scions. Broly chose to wear his usual outfit, the one with the red sash and the golden ornaments. It gave him a more royal feeling. The clothes were gifted to him from Aaliyah and Kana. They were almost as durable as his battle armor, but it didn't absorb shock from attacks like his armor does. At his level, it was already unnecessary to care about armor, though as they were almost a non-existing factor in a battle. It was only good for surprise attacks when he doesn't pay attention, making assassinations more difficult. Of course, this would only apply for normal science, as he had an unbelievable tenacious body, which wouldn't be hurt by simple attacks. Hit from Universe 6 would still be able to kill him in one hit, as he can even compete with Super Scion God. But there was no such person in this universe, at least Broly hasn't heard of a famous Universe 7 assassin. Without thinking about it anymore, he made his way to the Scion's headquarters. There was no one outside, roaming around, as he headed to the hall where the coronation would happen. 
He opened the door and was greeted by a crowd of 400 plus scions. Only scions were present, as this was deemed a holy tradition. Broly walked along the red carpet between the two halves of the crowd. He saw Jain, Taro, Aze, Aaliyah and Kana at the very front smiling at him. Aaliyah even gave him a thumb and Kana pointed at him, herself, and then thrust her hips forwards almost unnoticeably. He almost laughed out loud but didn't let it show on his face. He looked at the crown. 16. 16 years ago he died being robbed in an alleyway. After reviving inside Broly's body, he had faced numerous challenges and almost died as a toddler. He had woken up on a strange planet with countless difficulties, but he had overcome them and grew stronger rapidly. Now 16 years later he was being crowned the new king of the race that took him in. From here on onwards he would lead this race to a glorious future. His journey has just begun. Broly climbed upwards and was greeted as per tradition by the strongest warrior of the oldest generation. Daz. He carried a golden crown on a small red pillow. We, the warrior race, Scions, only respect and accept one kind as our king. The strongest. Does anyone claim this title from Broly's dead hands? Silence. No one dared to challenge the most talented their race has seen for a millennium to a death battle. If that is the case, Broly, hereby you represent the whole race. Let your path bring glory and power. Daz placed the crown on top of Broly's head. Thud. Every scion kneeled on one knee while facing the ground. Broly turned around and saw the scene before him. His figure suddenly started to bulk up as he transformed into a 2.9 meter tall monster with yellow eyes. An unbearable pressure was released from his body. He single-handedly suppressed every single scion in the hall. Broly announced his acceptance in a deep, booming voice. I am King Broly, the legendary Super Scion. Hooray! Hail King Broly! Hail your majesty! Long live the king! Shouts filled the hall, as the scions welcomed a new king, a legend, whose destiny was to surpass all. Broly stood at the door of his spaceship, as he gazed back towards his people, which only had worship in their eyes. He quietly entered his ship and closed the door. He headed inside and saw Aaliyah and Kana grinning brightly at him. He couldn't help but smile as well. By the way, who is flying? Broly asked confused. Oh crap! I will fly, no worries. Aaliyah quickly ran towards the cockpit and started steering the spaceship at the rift. You can fly? Broly asked as he entered the room. Yeah, Violet showed me the basics. The steering was made easy as well, so even I could fly it. Besides, for the most part, we will use the autopilot. In space, the ship distorted until it disappeared from the spot. They carefully flew through the rift until they safely came out on the other side. Aaliyah turned her head towards Broly. So, which planet are we heading to? Broly went to the panel and typed in the coordinates. A bluish frozen planet popped up. This is our first destination. So, what business do you have there? Aaliyah asked confused. The planet didn't seem to hold any life and was basically a frozen block in space. Hee <laughs> hee. On my journey I have acquired a map with locations of origin crystals. This planet is not far off course of my real destination and holds an energy crystal. There are crystals on other planets? Aaliyah inquired. Yes, there are three of every kind spread throughout the universe. You have to use a different circulation method for each of them. I will show you how it is done as we travel. Ha ha ha, but you will only get the scraps. Broly shamelessly exclaimed. You are so mean. We are your wives, Aaliyah shyly said. Broly, don't mind the crystals. I want something else. Kana embraced Broly from behind, slowly guiding her hand from his abs down. I want what Aaliyah had yesterday. I want it in the rear. She whispered into his ear, before giving it a light bite. Aaliyah heard this and started blushing, as her eyes became unfocused and started breathing more heavily. Broly turned around and saw Kana only in her underwear. Why are you half naked? Broly spoke with a coarse voice. Well, it is only us three. We can do it everywhere and whenever we want. Clothes would only slow down the act. He, Kana bit her lip and looked at him seductively. She knew how to arouse Broly. He gulped hard. 
before he picked up her clothes and pushed them into her hands. We will only do it once a day, but the rest of the time we will spend training. Kana saw the seriousness in the statement, so she dejectedly dressed up again. Aaliyah observed the two and inwardly thought that although Broly was serious, he didn't say it with his usual unwavering determination. There would be room to move and with his kind of libido it would not be weird if they did it three to four times, maybe even more. She suddenly felt something poke her cheek. She turned to see Broly poking her cheek with his finger. You too. I want you both to be vastly stronger after these five years. You understand? Now there really was no room for negotiations. Sigh. Of course, we will get vastly stronger. If you don't break us with your pent-up emotions, without hesitation, she put his finger in her mouth and started wrapping her tongue around it. Broly saw her suck his finger. Oh boy! This will be harder than expected. Kana grinned slyly as she saw this and seemingly read Broly's thoughts. All right, I turned on the autopilot. It will take us a bit over five years to reach the Milky Way galaxy and this planet. Aaliyah suddenly exclaimed, pulling Broly out of his thoughts. That is longer than I expected. Could you show me the star map? Yes, yeah, sure. Here you go. A star map with their position being a blinking dot showed up on the display. Why are we way out of here to the side? Broly was confused as he looked at the map. This didn't look like this when we looked into space from Perditus. Did our view change because of the distorted space? You are right. We should have been a year further away from the boundary. Aaliyah furrowed her eyebrows. Send the data to the ball I have left at the exit of the rift, so the others are in the know. Already sending. Also change our route to this place. Broly typed in other coordinates, but it looked like empty space. HM? There is nothing there, Broly. Aaliyah of course was confused, seeing him want to steer towards nothing. The city lord had asked me to save his niece, and she is trapped somewhere around there. I first wanted to do it later, as it would have cost us almost two years of time to head in the opposite direction and back. But now it is only slightly off course. I can bear a month delay. His niece? Can you show me how she looks like? HM. Sure. A picture of a beautiful female Hera was displayed on the screen. Aaliyah thought about something as her face became gloomier. Kana's expression also became more solemn. Are you guys all right? Broly asked as the room became silent. It is nothing. You wanted to train, right? Broly, go ahead. I have something to discuss with Aaliyah. Kana seemed to have thought of something. She pushed Broly outside and closed the door. Aaliyah, this is serious. We have to teach him to control himself. What do you mean? I can't even control myself. Aaliyah was anxious at the thought to have another female on the spaceship with the wild beast that is called Broly. Just throw the thoughts of extra rounds out of your mind. And Anne and... Like do it really only once. Won't this just make him hornier if he can't release it? I heard of a proverb of making a man happy. It is something about keeping a man's belly full and his balls empty. Aaliyah questioned this method. She only shabowinked once and then had a break for one day, which already frustrated her. Where did you get that proverb from? Vara. She's a succubus. Of course they have weird proverbs. Well, she said they didn't even shaboink every day and not as long. She also said she isn't that hardcore. You told her about your shaboink? You can't just brag about it. I am together with the same man. I, I just wanted some advices and I thought it would be good to ask an expert. I thought you wouldn't mind as you know, you are pretty open about that stuff. I, sorry. Aaliyah realized that although it was her shaboinking, she still shared Broly with Kana. She couldn't just assume Kana's standpoint on things that concerned the three of them. She should be more careful what she says in the future, Aaliyah thought. That's only between us three. Sigh. Anyway, we have another month until then, we are going to teach him some restraints. We will deny him shaboink for a few days, then let him release everything at once. It should help him restrain his urges and make it a habit for him to go days without it, but also keeping him satisfied. Ah, I see, makes sense. Let's do that. They firmly grasp their hands, believing in their plan. They just haven't realized that Broly rarely approaches them on his own. It is true that he indulges at the moment when in bed, 
but he had perfect control over his urges if he wanted to. They went into the training room with Broly and were almost crushed by the gravity. They had to turn into Super Scion to endure it. For the next hours, they had an intense workout, followed by an intense workout. The next morning, they were laying covered in sweat and white liquid as they embraced Broly in the middle, happily smiling as they slept content, completely forgetting what they planned the day before. In the next morning, Broly investigated a sound he heard in the storage room. He saw something wriggle under a blanket. He pulled it away and saw a small white ball blinking blue with arms and lenses that looked like eyes. It was one of the repairs and maintenance robots he had asked from one of the top scientists on the whole planet Perditus. He was very satisfied and grateful to them as they managed to improve and create the things he had asked of them. He again entered the training room and looked at the options he could choose. A gravity up to 2000. Temperature changes from minus 100 to 500 Celsius. Flying robots unaffected by the gravity that constantly shoot out lasers at the target. Flying needles, spears, and blades coming out of the walls and ground. The room resembled a death trap more than everything else. He wanted to use these things mostly to train his instinct. It was to prepare him so he could one day gain Ultra Instinct. The weapons and robots weren't releasing any energy, making it impossible to sense them through their key or life force. He could also configure the room so it would only target him and not Aaliyah or Kana. He readied himself for a hellish training. Fortunately, with his influence, he had acquired thousands of healing capsules. He also had some seeds and hundreds of the fruit of might itself. He had already prepared not to waste any time on this trip. He also thought the intimate time he spent with Kana and Aaliyah as important as his workout regime. It would give him something to vent and relax his mental state. He didn't want to be as grumpy as Vegeta. There had to be a reason why he slowly calmed down after he settled with Bulma and spent more time with her. Well, his grumpy attitude was probably mostly his nature, but still. Broly's natural urges weren't something he wanted to suppress. It helped him keep balance and it made him happy. Of course, there was something as too excessive, but he wouldn't let his body dictate who he is. He controlled his body and not the other way around. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.